Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chess.com Global Championship. Happy Monday, everybody. No better way to start our week than with a healthy dose of CGC. I'm your host, Grandmaster Daniel Naroditsky, and alongside me today, a great honor for the first time ever to be commentating with International Master Lawrence Trent. Lawrence, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Dania. And yes, it's an absolute uh, pleasure being here and it's a pleasure commentating with you. I can't believe after all these years of both of us doing commentary and being, you know, involved in this wonderful chess world that this is the first time we've actually teamed up. But I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Yeah, you know, me too. It's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be a super exciting tournament. Let's start by running through the format. The format is actually very, very simple. Uh, there will be 16 total uh, of these play-in tournaments. Each of them has exactly two qualifier spots. It's a nine round, 10 plus zero tournament. The first place of each of these uh, play-in tournaments qualifies automatically. And there is a mini match uh, between the second and third place spot. Uh, it's a two-game, 10 plus zero mini-match to determine the second qualifier, Lauren. So we got excitement yeah. on all fronts here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, uh, tons of events to get through uh, to the knockout phase. And I know we're going to come on to that very, very soon. Um, but even for players who, you know, don't get the opportunity to to play at the absolute top levels, they get to... A lot of them at least get to play in this play-in phase, play against some fantastic players and have a chance, of course, to win a really decent prize. For example, if you're the highest non-titled player, $300, that's nothing to turn your nose up at. Um, no, and no. with so many of these different events, uh, you're going to have your shot. And, you know, one of the things I was talking with, with you and, and obviously with our producer here, our lovely Bigfoot, um, <laughs> and I was blown away because... If this is the first time you're watching this, you're going to see there what they are playing for in the knockout phase. $200,000 first prize. Easily the biggest prize I've ever seen in an online chess tournament. It rivals even, I mean, it's more money than um, your, you know, a standard super tournament would offer. And 100000 per second is hardly a bad day, uh, day's pay either. Let yeah, alone yeah. <laughs> look at the rest. It, and, and, and a $5,000 guaranteed prize. So, yeah. you know, if you qualify and you've got Hikaru Nakamura in the first round of the knockout phase, and we'll get to the, the calendar of events in just a second here, but a $5,000 guaranteed prize for anybody who makes it to the knockout, which is why there is such a logjam of grandmasters competing in each and every one of the plan qualifiers. That's good for us because that means more entertainment. If you are a calendar type of person, pay attention to the next slide. It tells us when the various phases begin. We are currently in the open qualifier phase, which is still going on until July 31st. The winners of the open qualifier funnel into the play-in phase, which we are commentating currently. That ends on August 5th. Once again, there are 16 total play-in tournaments. That then results in the knockout phase, which starts September 14th. That features 64 players, 32 from the play-in qualifiers, and 32 invites. Uh, Lawrence, I think you put it best uh, before we went live. This is where the big boys play, and the big boys certainly play in Toronto, Canada, starting October 31st. Those finals are going to be unmissable. So cancel your wedding, cancel your engagements. You're going to want to watch Toronto from October 31st to November 5th. It's absolutely unbelievable, uh, and I can't wait to see it because... It wouldn't surprise me if the the biggest of the biggest boys turn up for such a for such a prize fund for such a, I mean it's just unbelievable. So kudos to Chess.com and everybody supporting. Whoa, uh, the platform. You you, you pr you're praising Chess.com. You're wearing of a Chess.com shirt. I, yeah. What's gotten course, into you? Hey, look, I've you know Danny's my boy. I've known Danny for a long time. Me and Bic go back a long way as well. Um, I was When I was originally streaming, I was doing a lot of streaming work for Chess.com. I was one of the OG streamers uh, back in the day before the Botez sisters just took over the industry. Uh, no, but um, no, I, I love 
I love the I love the company, I love the website, I'm good friends with everybody. So I'm really happy to see that there's been such enormous progress. And the games have kicked off. Danya. Yes, they have. Where to well, go first? Well, let me start just by listing some of the top players. We we have here pulled up the game of the uh, top seed by rating. Now, when I say top seed, everybody should take this with a grain of salt. These are not FIDE ratings necessarily. These are chess.com rapid ratings. Samuel Sevian has the black pieces here. And in the first round, we do know that all of the top GMs face significantly weaker opposition. Some of the other big names in the field, Andre Yesipenko, David Parabian, a lot of the participants in yesterday's and Saturday's RCC, Gadir Gusenov, Maxim Motlikov, more grandmasters than I could possibly list. I think there's about 20 or 25, as there usually is, these planned qualifiers. And a Karakon on the board of the top seed by rating, Samuel Sevian. Yeah, and by the way, I want to talk a little bit about Samuel Sevian, because I will say this, it's, it's common knowledge, it's in the public domain. I just uh, commentated on the uh, wonderful event for the uh, Meltwater Champions Chess Tour. Uh, and it was the FTX Road to Miami event. And Samuel Sevian played brilliant chess against some of the best in the world. Um, some of the top players were, were there and he actually won the uh, preliminary event to go to the qualifier stage. He then had a, a really unfortunate match against Wei Yi where he could have easily won. Samuel Sevian was playing brilliant chess and I'm just, you know, I was talking with Peter Leko who I was commentating with and I'm, I'm very, very bullish on Samuel Sevian and his future. He really showed like he, he made a bit of a jump um, as did, by the way, I was really impressed by one of your colleagues, Jeffrey Zhong. Jeffrey played brilliantly, especially day one of the preliminaries, uh, coming first in, in, on day one. Came a bit unstuck later on, but the, the future of um, American chess looks very, very bright indeed. And Aronian yeah, won it, of course. Right. But I think Sam played a very impressive game against Aronian. There is a reason why I forced a draw in uh, 10 moves in the last round of the U.S. Championship against Sam Sevian. I was looking at his recent games, and I was like, I would not touch this with a 10-foot pole. So, I, uh, you know, I, I decided to force force peace. But right now, there's anything but peace on Sam Sevian's board. And, of course, I will just add that he came within a hair's breadth of winning the RCC, losing to Wesley in a very hotly contested final match that went to the bullet game He's been on a roll, but I'm not so sure, Lawrence, that he's on a roll in this game. This looks pretty dangerous, although he's just managed to... Has he managed to trade queens? I guess why well, I can keep the queens on the board with queen b1. Yeah, his opening looks a bit dodgy, but he's playing somebody... I mean, on paper, he should really have no problems against whatsoever, right? A 2200 player? I mean... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just expect Sam, he needs to calm the position down. And even if we get to a slightly equalish end game, you do expect him to just turn it on. There are weaknesses to target here for white, for example, if you trade queens, knight takes c6. Um, the C c3 pawn is a permanent weakness. A2 is a weakness. You can see Sam uh, just, you know, playing some king c7, rook a very quickly and just slowly picking apart the white position. Um, that being said, of course, you know, if White is a bit uh, clever here, maybe he can drum something off, but no. Whoa, we do no, no, no. Bad, play. bad, 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 yeah. bad, bad. Yeah, this is not the way to go. Queen B1 was absolutely derogor. I mean, and if White kept, kept the queens on the board, this idea of going Rook C1 and C4 absolutely. is quite dangerous. But the temptation that these lower-rated players sometimes experience to to trade queens, as Sam recaptures with the pawn, which... which Makes sense. I mean, now his pawn mass is pretty mobile on the queen side. But your idea, Lawrence, king c7, okay, we, we just know the direction in which the game is going to go. White's fingers are going to start slowly slipping from the ledge here. Yeah, just you just feel this. You know, and it's, it's very unpleasant against the top guys because they know how to press. They know how to squeeze. Uh, they know when, and, and one of the key terms really is they know how to deal with tension. When I give my chess lessons, it's one of the hardest concepts to actually discuss and explain. When there is tension, when to take a pawn early, when to keep it, how. 
and there isn't really an answer for it. It's just experience and, and pattern recognition and, and well, it's art. It's, it's actually art. It's art to to like do what Magnus does. Yeah, it's an art. It, it's uh, you cannot explain it or or say, well, these are the specific skill. This is how he squeezes out seventy five percent of positions that are equal and then wins them. But all of the top guys, to to, to some degree, have this skill. And, and Sam Sevian, despite his age, is among them. Like I I've been talking about this very frequently. The young guys now are really good at end games. And that's really never been the case throughout chess history. No, you're absolutely right. They 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 put up tons of resistance and they can calculate extraordinary extraordinarily well. And and end games are a lot about calculation, about crisp, clean calculation. So okay, the position is far from over, though. The position is far from one. There's still a lot of work here for Sam to do, but this pawn on a4, you do feel this knight is gonna make a slow trek back over to the queen side. Maybe we're going to get a C5 break or an E5 break also makes a whole bunch of sense trying to leverage the central pawn majority that that he has. And again, you know, it, it might be a position where objectively white might be able to like, for example, I don't like knight B3 there. I would have gone C4 probably or tried C4 trying agreed, to, agreed. To, to, to just, uh, you know, try and exchange some pawns off the board. 91. Okay. Knight of eight regrouping. I like this very much. Okay. Well, nothing in, in this position happens fast, but you can see that Sam is sort of slowly improving his position. And he could play e4 at some point. You don't want to rush this move because he's got pressure on the d4 pawn that he may want to keep. But uh, I think we know which direction this game is going. And there is no increment, just to remind everybody the time control is 10 plus zero. So flagging is very, very much. Uh, on the table. Shall we take a look at maybe a couple of the other top games? Uh, Lawrence, what do you think? Absolutely. Let's have a go. Let's have a look. Where should we go next? Ooh, Lekwang Lim, who has not, I believe, played in any of the planned qualifiers. This is his first appearance. He is kind of struggling to produce any winning chances. He's got the white pieces here. And if anybody's better here, it's probably black. Well, Lekwang Lim, let's talk about him because, uh, Firstly, uh, he's a uh, top bloke, nice guy. Had the pleasure of getting battered by him quite a few times. Um, classy player. He is playing the Beal tournament as we speak, right? So he's playing this fantastic Beal International Invitational um, with some legends and some young guns, some absolute brilliant young guns. Gukesh, who's just crossed the 2,700 feet a uh, uh, barrier he's the third youngest of all time to cross 2700 so mm -hmm. you know indian chess has got a bright bright future you've got abdu saturo who world rapid champion unbelievable player top gms in the world give you know saying that he's one of the most talented players that they've ever seen and liam Le lequang is actually having a reasonably tough time against these guys from what i can understand i think the blitz didn't go that well for him there was the a blitz tournament yesterday. Um, so he's in the middle of that and playing this. So fair play to him to, uh, you know, to not even take the, because it's a rest day in Beale. Kind of surprised that he's, well, not taking the day off, but then not, again, this is such vegging, a massive vegging tournament. Vegging out in bed. But that's become more common, I think, for play. I mean, Hikaru is the trendsetter in this regard, I think, playing Title Tuesday, you know, during an over-the-board event. And it's just become, you know, as online chess has been more accepted, I think it's become more commonplace uh, for players to, to, to multitask in this way and, you know, uh, just exploit all of their all of their opportunities, uh, you know, and, and, and fill their schedules, given how much yeah. is going on right now. But isn't it great, Dania, that there's so much going, you can be playing been all over the board, we've got online chess, we've got different events, different organizers. It's a beautiful time to be involved in the sport. It's growing. Um, you know, years yeah, and years yeah. ago, this just didn't... If you if you go back to when you started to become a really good player, this didn't exist. None of this right? existed. No. And you didn't have a choice of tournaments to watch. No. Like, you waited two months until, you know, Linares started and, you know, Gary Kasparov is, is, is playing or, you know, Vichy Anand is going to be playing for the first time in three months. Now, you know... These players are, you know, playing their trousers during the RCC. You know, it, it's like, uh, you know, okay, no, trousers is the wrong word. I was 
trying to speak British and I failed. Yeah, <laughs> no, you did well. I was going to say under underwear, but then I was like, how do British people say underwear? <laughs> it is it, uh, underwear uh, uh, is, is the way we say. Underwear is underwear. Uh, Got it. Yeah. And sorry. And we say pants also, which means underwear, which is not trousers, which. Okay. Is there we go. That's what I was, that's what, the word I was looking for. Cause I remember pants can also refer to underwear. And yes. this is a very interesting position that like Wang Lim has with white against a Chinese player. Apparently, Black had the move Rook C5 in that position. The Knight on C7 Oof. is in quite a bit of trouble. But isn't Ooh, White really in trouble here still? FE3 and... Yeah. Why is, yeah. why is Le Quang Liam not in huge trouble here? He is, because this Knight from F6 is going to swing to D5. So the pawn on E3 is actually perfectly safe. It's got a, a handler. And once Knight D5 happens, I mean, White's King could just get roasted and toasted really, really quickly here. So if you're like Huang, you need to find a way to get the queens off the board. Even an end game is going to be unpleasant. And the time situation might constitute his only serious chance. Even the time situation, well, yeah, 245. That is a little bit low. But if you are quick here, you should be converting because, the, as you said, Daniel, the moves kind of flow naturally here. 95 queen. I mean, you play 95 instantly. here. You don't think about 95. You've just got to play it immediately. You've got to do it. Right. There you go. G3, and now you now oh. King H5, King H2. King H2, I think yeah, he's just holding big. on, huh? Queen G5 played. Okay, H5, H4 is another idea, trying to induce right. Uh, more, but the, more the moment you the moment you go H5, I go H4 with White, right? That's the point. So if I go H5 here, which I do expect, oh, the but yeah, now we're going to see H4, Queen F6. That's my prediction. Trying. I would put the queen on f5 to, to make oh, contact f5. the rook. Sorry, that's a much better move. You know? yeah. h4 played. Queen f5 is obviously much better. And then you might have some g5 if you're really, really, oh, yeah. really fruity. I mean, white's you know? pieces are, are sort of all stuck on the queen side. So the king is weak. Whichever way you slice it, white's position is horrendous here. This is, yeah, g5 right now essentially wins the game. Yeah. Because also, I mean, I mean, you, you yeah. blow open... Got to be a little bit. There we go. All right, dude. This could be this a guy's huge amazing. Upset. This guy's this amazing. amazing. Now I, I've commentated uh, three of these playing qualifiers, uh, and I I don't think I've seen a single upset. Three out of five. I don't think I've seen a single upset in the first round. Maybe a draw. This might be our first. If Black can keep this impressive play going, night before, night before. Yes, is totally devastating. He takes, which is also good. This is also good because 95, you might have the H3 intermezzo. I don't know if you want to play it, but it's on the cards. H3, King H2, Rook takes D5 and then take on F3. This, oh no, sorry, E3 is hanging. Sorry, so he does this first. Okay. But you can't take on E3 with the queen because of the way the black positioned his queen. If you take with a rook, rook, then D4 is hanging and, yeah. you know, the king's days are numbered. This is still good for black. Rookie three. I, okay. Rook. I have a feeling like Wang is going to swindle this. I also have a feeling with the minute 44. Let's go. Rook D4 is good. All right. Black is still winning. Rook D2 check is a very, very big threat. Rookie two. Okay. Now, if I just. Yeah, one of these moves. Exactly. He takes Taking... it. Oh, now. I mean, this is probably still objectively winning for Black. Queen B6. Okay, I feel as though I wanted. Four. Yeah, I, you can go H4. I also feel like exchanging pair of rooks can't be a bad thing somehow. Oh, wait a second. H4, queen, H6, and all of a sudden That's white that. is a mate threat, and you're right. Rook he changes two. rooks, Ooh. but apparently. He didn't like that. Why didn't no. he like that? Why didn't, why didn't the machine like that? Apparently, it's because of queen, H6. And that white's is. Gonna win, white's going to win this game. Does Le Quang find Queen H6? He does. And that's Anywhere. another thing. These top players, like, they never miss these kinds of chances. Well, Queen G6. This is a... Uh, you think he's just going to keep the Queens on with Queen F4? Yeah. Absolutely. F4. Black's going to miss some sort of a fork here. Queen G5 is a potential fork if you move your Queen from G6. What a, what a sad... Sad game for Black. I mean, he was literally this close. 
That's the difference, isn't it? Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the guys in that 2200, 2300 area, it's not that they, you know, they can't play really good chess. It's just there's um, a, there's a lack of conversion. There's a lack of uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I don't know, finesse. Finesse, exactly. Uh, you know. I, I have a bunch of students who I often play against and they give me a really, really hard time and they're rated 2,200, 2,300. They absolutely know how to play chess. They know where to put the pieces, but there's, there's a kind of disconnect at some key moments in the game. Um, and when you start to correct that and when you start to convert winning positions a lot more, that's when you see the jumps. It's not actually that they don't know how to play chess at all uh, or, or rather... It might, that they're much more inferior than the top guys because a lot of the time they're not. It comes down to that, and a lot of the time it comes down to calculation as well, just not being able to calculate as cleanly. But the the actual kind of feel a lot of the time is correct. But yeah, this should be a draw, of course, but um, zero chance you make a draw with forty seconds. Mm, I mean, the the, the huh? thing that makes this it's easy to play for black. I mean. The only t type of blunder you can make is, okay, I guess you can blunder your Apon, or you can walk into a skewer. But if, if Black can start giving checks of his own, then this should be drawable. 38 seconds is an eternity in a position like this. Queen F6, maybe? Queen F6. But now you have to calculate something, no? Or not? Oh, yeah, wait King a second. F4. Exactly. Like Quan trying to win this pawn and get F6? F no, but F6. F6. No. Oh. no, this is okay still. This is okay. Five, King F5. Five. Four, take, 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 take. And it's an F pawn. Very important. Oh, you're going to get an F pawn situation. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Wait, Let's see it. Don't take. go to G2. Don't go to G2. Yes. If you're black. I mean, this is a, this is a, but he's going to play queen and king versus king and try and flag him. I'm sure of it. Yeah. It, it's going to be close, but 25 seconds is a little bit too much. I mean, the problem is just that you, there's such a high probability of a queen trade. Like, you cannot avoid black interposing yeah. on F2. He's trying, yeah. though. Trying to find a way. Now he's, he needs to play a neutral move like queen E5 or there, queen B5. Queen F1. Yeah. Uh, queen F1! Oh, queen F1 swap. Why do I feel like black's going to blunder his queen? Like, I just get I this feeling. King D6. Oh my god. No, don't. Okay. He's going to go to A5. I, so I... He's going to go to A6 or yeah. A7. Oof. No, wrong. Why is Black allowing the king, king to like, continually run away? Okay. He has to avoid the threefold as well. That's also difficult. Almost impossible, but nine seconds he's making. This is this is twice. I'm sure this loads is loads of progress. Yeah, three times queen h6, and there this it has is. To be three times. There we go. Wow. Oh my god, what a result for uh, the Chinese player who was completely winning. But I'm sure he'll take it. He'll he'll hang his hat on this first round result. So we've got some upsets already, with only one round in the books. Any other Ooh. major upsets that you can see there? Or, like, can we scroll down and see if there are any yeah, GMs yeah. on? Uh, it'll take a second to load okay. to load more players, but it, it does look like all the top guys have won. Anton Giharo, uh, Wakita, Matlikov, uh, Jospem, who has come very close to qualifying, but has failed so far. And Ralph Mamedov, I think we should watch his game a little bit in round two. I don't know how much you know about him, but he's one of my favorite players, actually. Oh, Ralph, is he Baku Boulevard? He is Baku Boulevard. There you go. Yeah, Ralph Mamedov. I mean, I know Ralph. I've, 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 I've been in tournaments with Ralph. And if I remember correctly, on the Internet Chess Club, he was Moisbach, if I remember. I think that was his that name. That is Moisbach, and he had also Generalissimo. And he was Generalissimo also. So... <laughs> Ralph Mamedov has got decades of, he's literally been playing online for 20 years. Uh, very, very talented player. Got to 2,700, actually, Ralph Mamedov. Um, I don't think he's quite that high at the moment. His talent is, is uh, undeniable. 
Uh, so I'm very curious to see how how Ralph does in this tournament. And he's a I very a very sweet guy. He's a nice guy as well. So nice. And he he used to come to the Bay Area to teach at a to teach at a a, a camp. And I have a funny story with Ralph. So what happened was Ralph and I were playing a um, a little blitz match on chess.com. So I play D4, he plays G6. Uh, he plays Knight F6, Knight F3, G6. I was gonna play the Tory attack, Bishop G5. I accidentally mouse slipped Bishop H6. It was a complete accident. Of course he'd pre-moved Bishop G7 because who would Lafong you in a three minute game? So before I got a chance to offer him a draw, which I was going to do, uh, he resigned. And when I saw him the next time, I didn't know what to do. I was so remorseful. I, I <laughs> needed him to know that it was an accident. And he came up to me and he's like, Daniel, I was so upset after that game that I had an over the board game, a Bundesliga game right after our blitz match. And I lost that because of the Bishop H6 thing. And I was like, oh my God, he just made it five times worse. <laughs> of course we were laughing about it and it was all good, but that's my claim to fame. There Ralph you go. story. Top guy. Let's see how he does here. He's playing black against Cosmic. Is that correct? You did pronounce the, the name correctly. Yes. Cosmic. Yeah. <laughs> and we get we get a line which um, I've got some experience in. Ralph went for the uh, decided to go for the accelerated dragon, where he's going to put the bishop on c6 and the knight on d7 and try and uh, put the knight on c5 and occupy some squares, but. White seemingly knowing what to do here because he's playing in a very kind of standard good way. Maybe some king h1 here makes sense. Bishop f1 yeah, also. But the problem is always like you, you, you're you taught all of these moves with white. That's why I hate playing against the accelerated. And then at some point, it's like the I was reading about the Tay Bridge disaster. It's like everything's fine and the train is rolling along its tracks. And then all of a sudden, there are no more train tracks. And black is going to play a4 and just destroy you. Yeah, queen b4 is an annoying move. You might actually have to jump now with knight b5. Yeah, actually, I think you do. So uh, just to show a lot of pe some people in the chat, black actually can take on d5. Yes. But an instructive point is that after queen takes d2, you might say, oh, wait a second. Intermezzo, and I win the pawn. But the ki when the king has the f8 square, this doesn't work because you do actually need to recapture the queen, and then black takes on e7. Right. So that doesn't work. But white can, after knight d5, after bishop takes d5, just play c takes d5. And now organizing a4 is not so easy. That being said, there might be some tactics somewhere. Feels like there might be some tactics, but I'm not entirely sure. Like after queen d2, rook d2, oh, bishop d5 on the board. It's on the board, now, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. I think you should take with the c pawn, yeah, because I think using the c4 square is, is useful here for white. Uh, so I think Ralph is going to leave his queen on b4. Yeah, h5. So trying to, trying to get white to take, which which is not going to happen. Like white's not going to give him the a file. No, he probably shouldn't. That being said, I'm not sure how bad it is. For example, can I take take and go rook c4? It's a little bit out there allowing rook takes a2, but you then take on b4, and I'm not sure how bad your position is. But rook c2 is perfectly good and, and, and a decent move and yeah, now black yeah, has... holding the fort sorry no he's holding the fort no he's uh, holding the fort but i actually i actually kind of like what he's doing because is queen c1 ever a move uh at some point trying to then organize rook c4 and push black back even sometimes yeah i mean if you can somehow stabilize on the on the queen side you're doing very well here as, as white but Maybe you don't even have to do that. I'm curious to see what Ralph actually goes for here because it's not completely clear to me how Black. Well, H5, I think, it might be a, a bad sign for Ralph that he just he's not sure how to improve his position further. It, it, it occurred to me that the move B5 is tempting to cover C4, but at this point, White could already take on B4. And then if we pull up the analysis board here after Bishop takes B5, one more idea I wanted to show. If Black plants a bishop on c3 that might look all hunky-dory but there's this interesting idea that i really like connected to the move a4 it doesn't work here but just so people know this idea the point is that if you ever take on basan you drop your bishop here it doesn't work because the pawn on b3 is saying but it doesn't matter white's up a pawn here and raf is not going to go for this and he's treading water 
He's treading water here. He doesn't know what he to is. do. He is. I do like King H7, though, because um, sometimes uh, Rook takes C8 coming with check is actually a bit annoying. So it's going to be interesting now. I, I, I am curious what, what White will do here. I, I'm, I'm not also completely sure. The, the moves that come to mind are Queen C1. I'm not sure. You have to really be sure about that move before you play. Because what I want to do with queen c1 is when you go a4, I play rook c4, and then I push you back with b4, and then I'm winning. Um, oh, yeah, you are winning, because the rook on c8 is going to hang. Yeah, but my question was, there might be some really huge tactics somewhere. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to organize it, but I, I can't quite figure it out right now. How to make well, it work. What is Black going to do if you play Queen C1? Well, you, this is Rook C1. Also, Rook C1 might just be fine. Also, I thought, uh, yeah. Wow. Rook, okay. Yay. Damn, girl. It looks a little bit strange to me, but maybe okay. Now, let me. Hmm. Queen F2, maybe. Ooh, wait, I see a trap. Queen yes. F2. Yeah. Okay. This creates a threat. Let's make a random move. Okay. I think there might be rook takes c5, dc, bishop c5, and the queen is actually trapped here. Beautiful. <laughs> that is that is beautiful. But the problem is the black and play, for example. Oh, but no, now B6. your queen is really short on squares after some rook c4 stuff, no? Oh my goodness. Yeah, it is. Rook c4, queen a3, queen a3. rook c2, and bishop c1, rook, maybe? For example. Even here, you might have bishop c5, dc5, rook a4. In, in, not, not right here. Right. Uh, actually, maybe even right here. Uh, sorry, the rook is hanging. No. Uh, so this, uh, this is actually this creates is both threats. Yes, this is, this is, this is very nasty. This wow. Is very, very nasty. But the and this is the, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, this is the danger of these accelerated dragons, because this queen before move in this particular line is very, very common. And I, I remember playing it on the black side a few times as well, having my queen in a bit of a pickle. And it is in a bit of a pickle. Is Baku Boulevard going to go down to Cosmic Konstantinos Megalios, who I don't know very well at all. I'm assuming he's from Greece. Um, do you know the name? I, I don't know the name. Do not know the name, but I mean, you know how it is nowadays where like... Let's see. Everybody's, everybody's dangerous. He's, well, he's born in 95. He's 2,400 FIDE. So he's, you know, he's a proper player. And he could easily find Queen F2. Now, he spent a long time on this move, but that's also an indication of a very good play. And he plays Queen F2. Wow. He plays it. And it's an indication, you know, of somebody who under appreciates when a critical moment is in the game. He understood this moment here was critical now raf mamedov actually has to invest a little bit of time here if you go a4 i'm i'm wondering oh my can god you, can you go rook c5 still draw. it's a like draw C5? repetition you have a draw if you want it but can you, you do. play for the advantage there daniel and go b4 or is it way too optimistic well if you go b no you absolutely can i i, I don't think that white's worse here i also think bishop e7 should be considered. But after b4, okay, queen d8. Queen d8, bishop b6. Yeah, queen d6. Bishop, ah, you want to give back the exchange and your, oh, there's bishop d4 even. I'm, I'm blundering the house. any of that, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> I'm blundering oh, the but house. Again, you can repeat moves like with bishop c5, but I, I think that Ralph will, will not go for this because of the draw. I mean, ah. which is not a disastrous result in round two, but you know, there's only two spots, two qualifying spots. You need to make it into the top three. So every half point is golden for the most part. This is a tough situation for Ralph. Rook c8 on the board. Rook c8. So he moves the rook back. So he's got rook c8, rook b8, rook c8. Um, feel the, okay, rook c4 makes sense. Queen b6. The noose new tightens we'll around black's queen. Now, here's a guess. Thank you, Daniel. I was about to say, after queen b6, do you just play f4 and e5 and go for it? 
Yeah, you definitely, I think you do, because you have basically, well, I just want to point out the one thing you don't want to do categorically is take on C5 twice, because you might say, well, that's a yeah. free pawn, but you're giving away these huge dark squares all across the board. And this is a, an accelerated dragon player's dream. So nobody worth their salt would do that. Queen d2, queen d8 played. So white's keeping the keeping the, the, the status quo. Probably here, yeah, yeah, rook c2, good move to prevent b5. This is a good move. It's a great move. I mean, white's just playing great. Yeah, this is fine. White's you playing know, white, great. It's, it's plus one. It's plus one, and, and that's what you have in all these. And he's gone back. Now, I don't expect rook c4. I would like king h1 here as white. Just get your king out of the way. Avoid any future traps. Postpone your... your and we're on wow. the same line. I, I, I like these prophylactic moves. You know, I've just done eight days commentary with one of the greatest players of, our gen of, of all time, actually, Peter Lecker. A, a man who just understands chess at a level I could only dream of. And he, you know, his his uh, his desire for for harmony in a position and coordination and his appreciation of prophylaxis and so it really makes you love chess even more. Just commentating with Peter and King H one is a sort of move he would really enjoy, would really appreciate it. And while we have a trade now, this trade right now, ah, he just wants to win a pawn, but does he? I don't three. like it. I don't like it. No, but he does win a pawn because. But he I does, guess, yeah. Bishop C. Bishop C. No, Bishop H six by Ralph. Oh, that's this a nice a move. move. Yeah. That's actually a very good move. Uh, White yeah. could consider F four. Of course, that weakens the E four pawn though severely. Severely. Hmm. I thought the trade was a little premature. It didn't feel right to me because think about what Ralph had done. He'd gone rook c8, rook d8, rook c8. Then he went right. queen b4, queen b6, queen d8, <laughs> queen b6, queen b4. Like, <laughs> couldn't be a bigger demonstration that he also was struggling for moves. But okay, f4 played. So White understands that he has to try something. And now after the rook moves, let's say rook cb8 again, is White going to play rook c4? Uh, sorry, he can't. Well, how does he play? Or is he going to go e5? Yeah, how does he defend? No, I think he's going to go e5. I think that if we if we were bring up the analysis board for a second after e5, knight e4, uh, this is a worrisome situation for white because if you go bishop e3, you walk into d takes e5, and yeah. the bishop is hanging in this line. Uh, maybe oh bishop takes b4, bishop takes f4, and rook calm rook e1. The knight is attacked. Ooh, actually, I think this knight is the best bit... line. Yes, for sure. Okay. And White has embraced the challenge. I mean, at every critical juncture, you know, sometimes when you get a lopsided matchup, the lower rated player, and you'll know what I mean, is, it, you know, uh, subconsciously tries to simplify the position, subconsciously playing for a draw. White has not done that at all in this game. Not at yeah. all. Go big or go home. As they say, are we going to get an upset? I have a feeling we're not going to get an upset here. I just, I'm not in love yeah. with I, I, I feel as though Ralph's going to, okay, Rook CB8. Oh, and there we go. White right, right, shouldn't have done that. Giving up that okay. pawn with no contest. Still, the E file is open. It's just okay. don't go Rookie 2. <laughs> I expect Rookie really? 1 here. And he there plays it. And Bishop, Bishop F8. I mean, Black will have to defend this pawn. Yeah, bishop f8 play. And now I expect bishop b5 to be able to then go rook e3, a4, and stabilize. I'm going to interrupt us for a second, if that's okay. Yes, Sam Sevian has a fascinating position against oh boy. Uh, Sri Lankan Fide Master. I think you can forgive me for doing that. Let's <laughs> go. You see this position. I, I mean, knight f5, typical kind of idea to smash open the black king position, and it looks very good to me. GF5, queen G5, check. King F8, queen H6, check. King G8, and then take your pick. Bishop takes F5 probably is just, or even well, rook Bishop takes F5. Bishop F5, queen F2. Oops, <laughs> excuse me. What about rook takes F5? Let's yeah, that's that. what you said at the, that's what you said at the beginning. 
Yeah. You know, you know, you never said bishop f5. Oh, and, and look at this line. So black can say, uh-huh. Well, I can take on c2. And after rook g5 check, I can block with my game. Common defensive idea, giving up the queen for uh, for as much material as possible. But the problem is if you keep calculating at the end of this line, rook takes b7 is totally devastating. Yeah. Okay. Is so that the position? Cut. No, it's not. Oh my God, it, it is. It is. It is the position. I swear <laughs> I didn't know that. It is the position. Look at oh that. Oh my God, that's great. <laughs> What's your name? Daniel Nostradisky or Daniel Naradisky? <laughs> that's that's nuts. But Sam still has to win the game. I mean, the bishops are somehow defending Quite all of incredible. the mating square. How are they doing that? This is happening. Why is there no mate? I think there is. Uh, queen H. Uh, this hits the bishop and threatens queen E7. But C5. Ooh. Oh. Uh, oh, goodbye. Yeah, that's over. That's that's over. C5 and Black still had some chances. Maybe, yeah. Should we see if uh, Baku, the Baku Boulevard has, well, what's going on here? Takes, take, and the bishop did land on B5. No, but nice. he, he, you, you can see where this is going, I think. Yes. This is, I mean, White's about to lose another pawn because bishop C4, yeah. there's B5. Or maybe he won't, because b5, bishop, f1, and then that's actually very smart by white to induce b5. Alexa, yeah, I don't care. Knight takes d5. Does he want to even, he can take on b5, which, but yeah, I was going to say, does he want to play bishop b4, e6, and then claim that after something like takes, takes, and even that no, white's like... white's 100 percent fine there in fact yes. uh, knight d5 bishop b5 i wouldn't play because you give up c3 and then and, and wow and white continues to play well in critical moments here take that knight mr gorbachev tear down this wall and white should be okay here white should be okay yeah, yeah. i think a draw is not an unlikely result in the time situation has virtually equalized as well. By the way, you do realize that I live five minutes walking from Checkpoint Charlie and the Berlin Wall. Really? Did you, re did you realize that? You didn't know that, did you? I, I mean, I, I actually didn't know where you lived. Yeah, come to Berlin. I live mm -hmm. literally in the slap in the middle. I can get to Checkpoint Charlie in five minutes walking where the wall and the remnants of the wall are all around. That's really cool. It's cool. Just living yeah. next to history. Just you know, living you know. next to history. It's, it's amazing. Literally. Really. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's quite stunning. You've got the Jewish memorial as well, of course. There's tons of stuff here, but it's, it's quite incredible. B4. This Take should B5. be a draw. Yeah, this should be a draw now. Takes and Rook D3. I, I did not like Rook Takes D6. I know that sounds ridiculous, but... White should have gone after the okay, B pawn. That King, would have been an instant draw. King e4? Yeah, rook no, it's three. still a draw, of course. But rook c2 maybe and rook c3. I mean, the, black has ways to keep the game going. Mm -hmm. Rook e4, though. Okay, rook e2. Ralph is going to try everything. He's going to pull out all the stops here. Oh! Wait, oh. takes oh, 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 he didn't see it. No, he didn't oh, see it. Lord. Wait, okay. Rook now Rook D4, because whoa, you don't whoa, whoa, mind. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this, King F5? You don't okay. let the king in like this. King D5 is a horrible move. Horrent what is, where is he going? I mean, he's it's cut so off along the C oh, file. It's, it's bad. And, and, but this and is what always happens. It always happens like this. F5 oh, wait. I've checked? No. If I check, might have been interesting. Seven, maybe. Yeah, five. but White's lost. White's lost the thread completely in this game. Completely. Rookie Ooh. six. Okay, but uh, F five now. Rook c five check. That's the problem. Yeah. No. Oh, that's such that, a tricky move. He played yes. Rook c six and then Rook c five check, and he's going to win the pawn, and win the game. There was no need to panic. I mean, White was doing everything perfectly, and then all of a sudden, just total harakiri. Totally unnecessary, and, and Ralph is gonna is go also. White only has eighteen seconds. Sorry, we should have pointed that out. But White has got no time as well. So. Yeah, 
You know what's a, a beautiful line? Black can trade rooks there and win, but okay, Ralph is just gonna flag him slash promote one of his pawns. Yeah. Okay. No it's need all to over. do anything. As a wise man once said, no extra points for being flashy in this game. Right. Okay. The pawns are rumbling up the board. This one is over. Time to switch to a couple of the games which are still ongoing. We've got a Ram Hakobian. Grandmaster, uh, Armenian Grandmaster, currently studies in the U.S. Locked in a very tense struggle, trying to checkmate Black, and it's a draw. It's a draw. Okay. Just drew, huh? Okay. Okay, we got a couple of other top games still in the time scramble phase. Look at this. This is what we call a draw, but White is going to try and flag Black with the five extra seconds. This is nasty stuff. Ooh. Oh, it no, he, okay, and a repetition at this point. Okay, he's not, okay. There's one uh, one game still remaining. A guy named R, R. Doofus. <laughs> he's R. not Doofus. playing like a doofus. No, the D pawn is, is marching, both pawns. Bishop G4 is excellent, cutting. Bishop D1 Just, is excellent. Don't, don't play knight H3, D3. But okay, it doesn't matter why it's going to fly. Doesn't even, even that might be winning. King E3 is professional, very nice. Wow. Very, very nice indeed. And our doofus moves to one out of two. There are two rounds in the books. Round three is now underway. And uh, I'll give you a menu of, of players whose games we can follow. There's Motlakov, Benjamin Bach, Anton Giharo. Anybody that, you know, you have a hankering to, to, to watch? Um. Yes, let's see David Anton, my boy, El Nino. Yes, I was actually hoping you would say that. Okay, David Anton Guijarro. Is he the Spanish number one? Uh, he's not. Paco is, Paco Vallejo is the Spanish oh, number Paco one. Oh, Paco is Spanish number yes. one. Uh -huh. Yeah, Paco is number one. Um, Alexei Shirov uh, has, I mean, Alexei was actually over 2,700 very recently again. Alexei is, has switched federations uh quite a bit in recent years so i think he <laughs> yeah. is playing for spain but i think paco is 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 number one and actually david anton had a horrific tournament i was commentating the prague international chess festival it paco vallejo was also playing but it was anton paco it was david navarra it was um who else was playing oh goodness name slipped me now a bunch of you know very strong twin and David Anton had a woeful event. He finished on something like minus six. He had literally the worst event I've ever seen him. And I think he dropped 20 odd rating points. So wow. he will definitely not be Spanish number one, but a class player, a class player. And, um, you know, uh, very creative, uh, very, very fun to watch him. Does a, does a lot, of, lot of work early on in the game, tries to get original positions. Very, very good. Yeah, I would call this almost the Dubov school. I think he's an adherent of that school where he will play, he literally plays absolutely everything. And then he will like come up with incredibly creative ideas in relatively mundane openings sometimes. Exactly. So. Exactly. But we have a so, poly system here, which is a mundane opening, but I like the way that he's handling it. Yeah, I mean, okay, he's he's playing some, you know, he's just, he's he's trying to get a position. The bishops are working, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Black's position objectively shouldn't be too bad. It doesn't feel like it's critical yet. But at the same time, like, let's say you play, yeah, okay, he plays D takes C4, which actually is probably I, a half decent I, move. Yeah, but allows knight takes c4. And white just got the easier game here. And, right. and really, the only reason is because if you compare just the position, it's symmetrical with the exception of the asymmetry created by the disp disparity in the bishop placement. I mean, the Fianchetto bishop really breathes so much life into white's position here. Right. Bishop b so Okay, so now is the big question of how to proceed. Do you play a move like queen b1? with the ideas Ooh. of, I mean, it's a little bit funky. I actually expect more A3, a bit more control, a bit more 
harmony, preventing any night before jumps, um, uh, threatening sometimes before gaining space, and then you can uh, you can uh, achieve more things on the queen side. I do expect a3. I think queen e2 feels wrong, but that could also be on the board. I'm curious what David Anton will do. You queen don't C2, want to go nine. queen c2 in such right. positions. Yeah, this is actually an instructive line. If we pull up the analysis board here for a second, knight b4, bishop f6, knight c2. Or no, apparently the engine is laughing at me. I guess maybe just a queen f6 is incredibly strong because bishop takes f3 is going to be a threat on top of everything else. Now, this is this is garbage. Right. This is garbage. You don't want to do that. And A3 is on the board. So Lawrence and Tangiharo coming That's through it. once again. Well, it's just a very useful move. It prevents all your knight befores, and it gives you opportunities to expand. While black doesn't actually have a clear sort of move. I mean, black can play queen e7. This is standard move, bring the rooks in. But is this the way to play? I'm not completely convinced. Um, slightly tricky here for black, slightly tricky. Yeah, it's, it's just these positions, they're very, very hard to play and, uh, good stuff here in the early going by David and Tan. Let's, uh, switch to, uh, another game of somebody who we haven't uh, seen. I mean, a lot of people have two out of two a lot. So I, I really okay. don't know even who to click on. Maybe, a well, let's take a look at Benjamin box. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> Look at the uh, there we go. We'll pass, oh shall we? Well, yeah, I mean, this is a bit that. of a dream setup for, for Benjamin with White. I mean, he's got a, assuming, assuming he's got an exchange Slav here, but he's got the better version. Because after Rook FC8, a move like Queen B6 is very awkward to meet, uh, where you pin laterally and you pin vertically. Um, and Black is a bit stuck, actually. And then moves like bishop takes a6 exist and brings back memories of all these Aronian games um, in this line. You also have, you can maximize all pieces. Knight e5 then exists, knight d2, knight b3, knight a5 exists. There are all, there are a plethora of plans for, for white there. And black just doesn't have the setup. Black would love to trade rooks most of the time in these positions. If you can get all four rooks off, you really ease the, the pressure on your position. But knight a5. I was going to propose this move. Right. If this works, it's good. Yeah, but I don't think it solves the underlying problems of black's position. You, you pointed out the c file. Like white could even go queen c3. Yeah. Rook takes c5. Queen takes c5. And even the simplest possible way of playing, and the Aronian idea, bishop takes a6, comes in incredibly yeah. handy here. Black's just in big trouble in yeah. this type of position. It's on the board. I'm going to close the blinds as you're talking, but okay. Benjamin Box. Yes. Queen takes, Queen takes C5 on the board. Full control because as Daniel was pointing out, if you take on C5, Rook takes C5, you can't retreat the knight. And if you move the B-born, it's disgusting because now your structure is unstable forever. So this is a this is a gross gross position and one that objectively looks completely losing for black actually. Let's move so on. One guy that uh, you know people shouldn't fall asleep on. He almost uh, he did not qualify last time, but he came very close. He had a perfect score, and and he can play some mean uh, rapid chess. And that's Armenian Grandmaster Semvel Tersahakian. He's got the black pieces. Uh, in this game, he's on two out of two, and he's facing off against the Ukrainian IM. I actually know absolutely nothing about this grandmaster, uh, Dania. Is he a young <laughs> guy? Is he? Uh, well, my I think story? he's like a year or two older than me. So if I'm okay. old, then that makes him. That basically makes him ancient, ancient in chess years. Um, you're not old, and he's not old. Believe me. <laughs> Uh, okay, so he's a couple of years, so he's like 28 or something. I would say so. I would estimate that. And he's okay. well over 2,600. And the great thing about the CGC is just that because you have a fair amount of qualifying spots, you're going to have people like him taking on the likes of Hikaru Nakamura, you know, in 
you know, in the knockout phase and you don't get that very often. You also get that in the Olympiad, which is why I absolutely love the Olympiad. You know, those matchups between really good players who are 2,600 and super GMs. Right. So. Well, his position, okay. let's not, we're not going to sleep on him then. Basically that's, that's the story here, right? That, you know, he looks like he's got an interesting position here. Very unbalanced position could definitely outplay his opponent, Sergei Pavlov. Ooh, Malakov has has uh, won his game already, so he's on three out of three. Sam Sebian, I'm just looking through the other games to see what the juiciest one is. I think Sam Sebian is down a piece. Sam Sebian is down a piece, as in for no comp. No, he's up a piece. He's black in this game. So, <laughs> I was oh, he's like, up a piece. That sounds wrong. Right. Okay, yes. so he's going to win. He's going to win pretty uneventfully. And the interesting thing is that we already have a bunch of Grandmaster on Grandmaster action. For example, we've got Anton Smirnov, Australian GM, playing Jospem, who gets the short end of the stick with his round three pairing. Right. Absolutely. Um, Anton Smirnov. I, 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 yeah, and Anton, uh, he was world junior champion, right? If I remember correctly. I think he won the world junior. I can't remember which age category, but he kind of exploded. Did he get to 2,600? I think he did. Yes, he yeah, definitely did. I think he he's 2,600 did. on the nose, actually. Right. So actually... He might be Australia's highest rated grandmaster of all time. Oh, no, sorry. Ian Rogers. Ian, Did, Ian, Ian Rogers. But I don't know if Ian Rogers was ever over 2,600. No, I don't think he was. Because I'll back then, check. like 2,580 was, you know, people need to understand that in the 1980s, like 2,580 was well, equivalent of like 2,730 to today. Here we go. Ian Rogers, peak rating 2618 in 1999. Wow. And actually, if he was 2618, that means he was top 50 in the world, which was no joke in, in the late 90s. Um, so mm -hmm. maybe the second best player of all, of all time. But uh, he's got a position here against Jospem. Now, tell us about Jospem, because this guy is a serious player. He's an incredibly serious player. He is a blitz wizard. He sort of burst out onto the scene about a year ago. He started playing online a lot. He's done very well in Title Tuesdays. And, you know, that has also paralleled his over-the-board achievements. He's high in the 2600s. I think he studies in St. Louis now, so he's got a stable base. And, uh, you know, he's just incredibly consistent. And consistently dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I got beaten up by him on a number of occasions in Title Tuesday. And uh, a lot, you know, I hear a lot of grandmas talking about him. And, uh, you know, He's very, scary. very, scary very, very good. Player. Yeah. And, but we have a position here where we've got dynamic quality. White is successfully blockaded. There are no pawn breaks. It should be a draw. Whether it will be a draw or not is another thing. It really does depend on how ambitious Black wants to be. White is really not, White does not really have any ideas here. Do you Z see I this? I think this is zero. Just, as it, just a draw? Yeah, because Black's never going to go F6. That's way too dangerous. Right. I mean, the E6 pawn is going to be just a glaring, glaring weakness. The only way I see this game, you know, ending in a decisive result is if like white blunders bishop takes d4 that's not happening i think they're going to agree to a draw any second now okay Okey so dokey. let's we've got move this on. game we've got andre yesipenko who already has shed half a point and uh, the margin for error for andre has shrunk tremendously he's got the black pieces here as he tries to nurse an end game advantage and he should be able to win this i think check check and queen f3 maybe andre yesipenko also playing the build tournament so they're all they're oh, both wow. playing, yeah the the, the the he was he was playing he had an all right blitz day as well i mean he he uh, if you look at the current standings of bill it's gukesh first 
Mm -hmm. uh, Le Quang is actually in second because he had a phenomenal, I think it was, a, they played a chess 960 day and Le Quang played brilliantly. Um, and then Yesipenko is in third. So mm -hmm. Yesipenko here with the black pieces. And this is completely winning. Completely winning, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, as long as you avoid perpetual, and to avoid perpetual, all you have to do is keep the queen on this diagonal. You have to identify where the opposing checks are. Okay, this is, he's going to staircase his way to C2. Is it actually worth going queen C2 check and then just giving the D pawn here and then just running with the A pawn? Or is there just no need to give the D pawn? Like, do you just I go D4? Well, but white's going to go king E3, though. Yeah. I think it is worth going a4. a4, queen d5, a3. Yeah. I mean, the queen on c2 is ideally placed. You could not find a better square for it. And actually, then you put it on b1, which is even better. You, you... Oh, okay, there is a better square for it. You're right. <laughs> and then and then you then you force the pawn home and you avoid all the checks. The beautiful, beautiful, beautiful technique. Yeah, Andrea Sapenko, the win is not in any doubt. He will move to two and a half out of three. Another matchup of heavy hitters here in round three of this CGC playing tournament, Sankal Gupta, Indian, young Indian GM, very dangerous against Grigori Oparin, who needs, uh, does not need an introduction. Well, he shouldn't, but he might actually, because there might be a few people <laughs> that don't know him. Very, very strong, young Russian uh, grandmaster. He's been around for a while now. And Oparin is, he, he's a weird, uh, quantity to me i mean he's a weird because his talent is undeniable but for, for whatever reason he he hasn't been able to stabilize over 2700 in my i you know i think he's floating around 2680 2690 uh i'll double yeah. check yeah i mean yeah but yeah yeah you're right he hasn't been you know able to I mean? break through he hasn't he, been he, able to break through sevian has jeffrey zhang has it apparent hasn't been able to join them and the, and the question is why, because his talent is there. So something is missing for him to jump that next level. Actually, I believe he, he, he's in Missouri. Is that right? That's, that's he, absolutely correct. Yeah. He is in Mizzou. And, uh, and, and you're right that something, something is missing. There's just some ingredient that, that's lacking in his play, but it's, it's hard to say what it is. But he was involved in the ultimate storyline of the previous uh, play in tournament where Eric Hansen managed to qualify. So Eric and Grigori got second and third place. Uh, they, I don't know if that you were uh, watching that. Launch, I, I, I was there. watching. Yeah. That was just unbelievable and, and an absolute heartbreaker for Grigori. And it's, it's hard to come back and play this tournament from scratch when you come that close to qualifying. And yet that's just what you have to do. Right. It's a, it's a cruel game. It's uh, it's a brutal sport, actually, and uh, the mental toughness. I was actually talking about this again with Peter Lecker about what to do, how to bounce back, and I think there is a, a tremendous market for, uh, or not a market per se, but a, a kind of under appreciation and undervaluation of uh, sports psychology in chess. And uh, I know when I was working with Fabi, that was an area that we were you know, seriously looking at and working with sports psychologists because it's competition like anything else and having the tools and being equipped uh, to be able to, you know, effectively be able to bounce back and be mentally tough. Mm -hmm. uh, this applies to all sports and, and chess, is, chess is no different. Um, and I think it's, yeah, yeah. I think it's an area that there are certain players that could really benefit from exploring it a bit more about how to improve their mental toughness. Because nerves in chess is just so common. I suffer horribly from nerves, actually. Oh yeah, same. And I think so many players would work from, would benefit from work with a, with a sports psychologist. Even the chess players tend to push back on that and say like, ah, you know, it's very wishy-washy, but it's not. I mean, this is, you're talking about, you know, a component that has actually, I think, directly contributed to some players not making it to the world elite. Well, I tell you, I mean, talking about nerves and Ian Rogers himself, there was a name. Ian actually quit because of poor health as a result of 
uh, as far as I understand, uh, of mm-hmm. uh, the pressure of chess. And he's not the, I mean, even we saw our, our dear friend Levi Rosman, right, the other day, uh, tweeting that he's retiring from tournament chess as a result of just not being able to handle the nervous tension. And it nobody really... can blame him. Like, it's just, no. it's just so, it's so understandable to yes. everybody. And, you know, I've, I've come close to doing the same thing. And by the way, in the meantime, Uparin is in huge trouble. A lot of stuff was being missed in this game earlier, but Black has one more source of counterplay. But yeah, yeah I mean, totally understandable decision. Yeah, Parin on the ropes here. And, but it's not straightforward, like how you win this position with White at all. Yeah, White's well, up three pawns, but the king on b6 is actually very safe. It, it walked all the way from, well, it walked. It was forced to b6 all the way from the king side. And here goes one pawn. Rook d4, maybe. Can you even trade? I know it's a ridiculous thing to say, but... Yeah, you can. King And king b5 and king c4. King b5 and play that? I mean, I don't know. c4, okay. Baron's going to win this game, I'm pretty sure. Check. Okay. Really? Because I don't see how to save the d pawn now. Rook d4. Oh, now you need queen h6, h6 check. check. Yes. Oh, that's a nice move. Yes, yes. That yeah, I played, I, I played Oparin's opponent two days ago in a blitz match. I don't know why I said Oparin would win. Because he was he is incredibly strong. I mean, I won by a pretty large margin, but it was largely because of the clock. Okay, take the queen, but rookie eight is coming. You could just go rookie. I mean, anything. You're I don't know. This is going to be close. This is going to be close. The time. The time. How quick is Oparin? Take, take. King g3. King g4. King g4, okay. rook g3. You got to you curl yourself up into a ball here. Oh! Oh, my a, goodness. What a dirty he tried move. It. He tried it. You got to try it, but it didn't work. I mean, even if I had gone g7, why would have won? Right. So, <laughs> wow, what a win for Suncalp. Huge. Gupta dispatching Oparin in round three. And uh, the, 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 the number of perfect scores continues to thin out. Jasper, Manf- oh my God! What happened? Was it? How did this happen? I thought that was going to be a draw. One hundred and thirty-two moves. Oh my goodness me! Wait, so why some, did White do that? I mean, Anton okay. Smirnov just went nuts for no reason. He put a knight on f six. That knight got stranded. Jasper took it and then started pushing his center pawns. There was but, zero need to do that. Who is Billy Kimber, by the way, from Scotland? At the top. Yeah, it's Maxim Maxim Matlakov. He's based in <laughs> Scotland. I I don't believe so. I just think he's 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 embraced the full. What show is Billy Kimba from? Is that from? Uh, that's from a British show or a Scottish show? Chat, help me. I don't know. No, I know it's a famous Peaky series. Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. But that's yes. not Scotland, Billy. That's the that's Birmingham in the middle of England. If I remember. Ah, correctly. okay, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. But for whatever reason, he's got the Scottish flag. He might be the greatest Scottish player of all time. Closely After. followed by Colin McNabb and Colin McNabb <laughs> and Jakob Agard and various Neil other McDonald. players. Yeah. yeah. Well, Neil, well, Neil McDonald was English. Oh, English also. Okay. But he's John got Shaw. a Scottish. John Shaw. You've got Jonathan Rousen, actually. Shout out to Jonathan Rousen. Love. Oh, I'm a huge Jonathan Rousen. I, seven Deadly yeah. Chess Sins. Chess for Zebras, two of my favorite books. Fantastic writer. Great guy. All right. So actually looking at the standings, we've got Matt Lakov, we've got Bok, we've got David Anton, we've got Jospin, uh, we've got Baku Big Boulevard. Crew. Yeah, we got Baku Boulevard. We have a couple we've of GMs Sam that are Sevian. a little less well known. We've, we've got Sam Sevian, we've got Hrant, we've got... Vladislav Kovalyov. I mean, we've got a lot of a lot of top GMs now on on three out of three. Who are we watching here? We're watching Sam Sevian against Sam Chess Move. Yes, yeah, Sam against Sam. Uh, Sevian yeah. against Tersahakian. And yeah, Sam Sevian's form. I mean, every tournament it seems like he's winning every game. It's like what, one after the other. Isn't it crazy how consistent he's been? And you've talked about his. His amazing form, but just yeah, not just his form in one tournament. The RCC, the CGC, 
classical tournaments. He's over 2,700. I mean, everything is going Sam Sevian's way these days. I wonder what clicked because, it, you know, Sam, I mean, actually, he's been around for a long time now. I remember when Gary Kasparov himself, I think he went to do one of these youth training camps years ago in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and pointed out and said, this kid here, Sam, is, is the one. I mean, he's got the goods. But I wonder what has changed because how Sam is, I mean, how old is he? He's like... So I had this conversation with Irene. I think he's 21. But I, I had this conversation yesterday with, with yeah. Irina, where when you talk about prodigies, in my mind, they're always like 13. Like when I think right. how old Jeffrey is, I think, oh, he's like, he's like 15. But uh, Jeffrey's like, you know, he's over 20 now. So they're getting a little bit older, but still, still very, very young. And, you know, tremendous, yeah. tremendous potential for Sam Sevian. But in terms of the position... Probably a slightly better position for White. I mean, Black has this very, very bad light scored bishop and a weak pawn on e6. Just seems like a solidly better position for Sevian. No, definitely easier to play. You've got a target. Uh, feels, feels really nice for Sam. I guess there are a whole multitude of different ideas uh, here. I guess, I mean, trading large squared bishops probably isn't the end of the world. You might try something a bit more fruity. I don't know, but uh, you know, you might play Bishop G five here. Try and try and actually provoke H six, for example, is is not ridiculous. Yeah. Wow, and he does get me that. in, sub me in, coach. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I know, think there's a couple spots still open. Yeah, that's it. No, it's, it's funny. Actually, all very, it's all open to all verified title players. <laughs> that's it. Go ahead. No, I was uh, I was it was comment another event. I was commentating. Uh, with uh, with Timur Rajabov, and he had to withdraw. And I was I was telling I said, look, I'm ready to go. Get me in there. Right. Anytime. Uh, I'm I'm hungry. You know, Daniel. I know you've commentated uh, on the I am not a GM uh, speed chess challenge for chess.com. I had a very disappointing uh, loss against the the, <laughs> the enigma James Canty. Um, no, that day I was not firing for, for a number of reasons, but uh, uh, I do plan to get my title, Dania, and I will, you know, I will get there. I will do it. I, I got to do it, you know. And I you always have it. to defeat Greg Shahadi along the way. I mean, you have so many dragons to slay. Oh, that even rhymes. There we go. <laughs> Knight of D2. Okay, so he did trade. I, I wasn't sure he was actually going to trade on F6. I'm kind of surprised by that decision. Oh, yeah, I thought yeah, he was yeah. going to go Bishop D2 there, but okay. Well, so I'm surprised played... by both players' decision-making because I thought Black was honestly going to go G5 and try to shove this pawn down to G4. That is... It's a bit loose, though, no? But maybe possible, but yes. Yeah, instead okay, he goes for the more developmental approach. Ricky two preparing to double rooks. Yeah, and if White can get full control over the U5 square, then you know, then I think White is very comfortable here. Yes. So. I think this knight on A5 will eventually venture back. Um, maybe Black. Can he play B5? I was about to say, can he play B5? And he just went and, and, and did it. Okay, rook a e1. Sam says, I don't care. I would still take white here all day because my king is safer in my... Oh, totally, team. totally. I mean, especially in like a rapid game. And he's up three minutes on the clock because Sam Sevian's time management is just usually stellar. Yeah. Rook b6, attacking attacking the pawn on b2 with two different pieces okay. and Sam takes on d5. Next, ed. So after ed is the critical moment. Uh, he went e5... No, no, no. F2 hangs there. How does yeah, he play true. after ED? This is actually quite the question. I think it's knight h4. Yes. I think it's knight h4. I'm actually pretty sure it's knight h4. That is definitely the move he what wants. What is Black thinking about? He's thinking yeah. about taking on b2. Ah, uh, no, but knight e4. Uh, and we lose, actually. We lose an yeah, exchange. Yeah. Let, let's pull up the analysis board. That's a cool line. Rook takes me to yes. 94, counterattacking the queen. Now the rook hangs, so you have to take, take. Oh, but maybe, 
Maybe Black is actually considering a position like this. No, nah, that's obviously lost. 95 and White's just steamrolling Black off the board here. Yeah, yes. That's, that's out of the question. This is on the board. Yeah, and now um, this is where things are a little bit loose. Of course, you want to defend D5, but how to do that is not entirely clear. Queen F7. Queen F7, all right. Now we need something strong. Strong. Knight G6, there might be Bishop F5. Actually, yes. that's an incredibly important resource. Otherwise, the situation would become very, very dire. Yes. Can I propose a preposterous move? No, it's, it's, it's too much. No, no, no. It's... Even for me, it's embarrassing to propose this move. I have to think. No, I, I, wanna... I want to see if I can guess it, but. <laughs> well. All right, what's the move? Let's hear it. Spit it out. No. Okay, I mean, if it works, it's genius, right? And if it doesn't work, it's ridiculous. Rookie five it, or something? Rookie five, yeah. I'm trying. Oh, I'm try hey. <laughs> I'm trying to make I, I it work. It. Yeah, it just loses immediately, of course. Check. <laughs> you know, I see Queen takes F two. Check. I'm I'm giving I, I'm giving the pawn and I'm giving the rook. But yeah, you can just. Sadly, there's this move. You're yeah, really hampered that. hampered by the fact that Bishop takes D five isn't actually dangerous. Uh, but Queen still, G6. an interesting try. Whoa. That doesn't feel right somehow. It that feels, feels weird. But it might be okay. And you understand what he's, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the point is that White is just going after this d5 pawn with everything that he has. And if he captures it, even in an endgame, his pieces are just ideally located to grab the grab control over the initiative. Hmm. Rook f6, I guess. Position is very complicated. Rook f5. Oof. Still feels like it's hanging by a thread for, for, for Black here. It feels like... Oh. Yeah. The pieces just aren't that coordinated. That said, chess is a game of of thin margins and sometimes it, it works and you just hang on and sometimes it doesn't. And this yeah, might be one of yeah. those weird occasions where actually black is just about okay by the skin of his teeth. Night of three by Sam. Sevian defending the pawn on b2, but the knight from a5 can jump into the game with knight c4. And if black wins b2, all of a sudden we could be talking about a, you know, a, we're already talking about a, a three result game here. Although look at the wow. clock. Four minutes up is Sam Sevian. Four yeah, that's, minute that's time advantage. I mean, that's huge. That's really a lot. Oh, I have an idea. Okay. Oof. Knight I don't like that move. Okay, that no, looks just, loose. Yeah, just all these weak squares. I, I'm Knight trying to set up a mating. A mating Knight F H4. Yeah. Knight yeah. F. And I want to go. And if Rook F6, I want to try Bishop D5 check. And I want to go Rook E8. And I, I, I want to see if that mates. Can we try? Oh, Rook E8 immediately. Wait. There might be Rook E8 immediately. Because this I th one, I think this is right. Take stakes, rook b8. Rook b8, bishop g8 is mate, my friend. Oh, that's beautiful. And if you go rook takes g6, importantly, I have bishop g8 there as well. King h8, bishop f7, king g8, king h7, bishop takes g6 is also mate. Wow, that's lovely. Absolutely lovely. And also, oh, no, no, no. knight g6 is faster because bishop f7, there's actually bishop f8. So this is just mate in one. Oh, sorry. That's... Oh, wait, we got it? It's on the board! Wait, how are we doing this? <laughs> the second time this happened, and he resigns! Stop me in, coach. I'm ready. Yeah, you spotted that entire construction. I actually didn't realize Bishop G8 was made after Rook B8. Incredible. Sam Sevian yep. just running like out of the gym. And he moves to four out of four. That and means it was we just should some... move on. Yeah, there was just something about the construction there for Black that was just uh, a little bit too shaky. That was the problem. 
So yeah, and he was too um, low on time. It was just a yeah. combination of, and you're playing Sam Sevian, so it's a bunch of things. Yeah, yeah. Vahap Sanal, Turkish young Turkish grandmaster with the white pieces here against Billy Kimba. That's Maxim Matlakov from Scotland. Mick Mick Matlakov. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> McMatlakov. Um, yeah, it could work. <laughs> it rolls right off the tongue. It does. And why does for slightly better here? These pawns on b5, c6 are, are a little bit weak. Um, you've got uh, you've got the better bishop on baby. It's not much though. It's probably closer to equality. Um, you would expect. I like you know, how that bishop is just chilling on a2. <laughs> I like, I would probably play f3 here with white to stabilize mm -hmm. and maybe even bring my king closer. Um, you know, king, mm -hmm. you know, just, just make some, some moves. Uh, I don't see any way to force the issue here. There is one idea if you really were desperate for a draw. Can you play c4 with white here? Just Can to you play c4 with white here. Yeah, mm. my idea is, I mean, I, I don't love it, but it's probably okay. Yeah, but I could throw in this intermezzo. I Queen think that's C5. a problem. Bishop c4. Yeah, I take. Yeah, I was thinking, what I was aiming for is this situation, where yeah, after the takes. trade, if you take then, a5, I have to right. take c4. Right, exactly. Which is why the king on h1 is such a huge liability in such situations because and that, the position's yeah. pretty wide open mm -hmm. he put the bishop on f3 which i have to say looks like a very odd decision to me the bishop looks a bit clumsy there i guess unless it's supplemented with e5 but that's a hard move to achieve and it's not no, all that impressive either i agree queen? with you no 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 no. i'm not i'm not at all impressed by how sanat is playing this position with white at all no yeah but rook c8 yeah, now rook rookie rookie five, five. Yeah, rookie five, you play a tempo here, probably. And yes. Does. Queen b6. It's all so odd. Can you now go h5? Okay. Take away some right, squares. Right. Yeah, he was actually stopping bishop g4, followed by rook d7. So he's... Yes. I, Malik is outplaying his young opponent, but the time situation makes the situation more unpredictable Ooh, c5 now that's a very committal move because the structure is now weakened and the queen has got a bit more access i'm not sure about c5 i don't know rook d6 okay all makes sense yeah rook d6 yeah. rook e d1 is coming next and maxi malikov says let me get those queens off the board before my king ends up in trouble and i don't like this end game from white's perspective because black has su such mm -hmm. an easy plan to create a passer okay and trade now we see again you know this bishop on f3 is really a silly piece it's it's not it's not really doing what what it can do and the bishop on c4 of course is much better so the question though here is how to improve with black it's part of me I mean, rook c7 makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Just rook c7 stops rook d7. That was white's only source of counterplay. OK, check. check. King f7. I think yeah, black wants the bishops. Yeah. Black wants what? Well, I don't know. I mean, so king e7, rook b8. He's coming to g6. Interesting. Okay, so white finally improving at the last. He prepares that now. Four. Yes, exactly. So rook e seven. Okay, things have improved for white. It feels f four e five is actually on the cards here because the rook on b six pins the f six pawn. But so I like also on the cards is rook d seven, which could be a big problem for white. After f four. Yeah, I think so. Ah, so rook d six. This might be clever. Just preventing. The black rooks, so rook e6. Yeah, but now rook e6. And now now white has oh. taken his eye off of the off of the queen side. Okay, but hold on. If I go, let's say Ria, let's say I go rook d1. Now f4 comes to tempo. I like the rook more on d2 than than d1 somehow. But yeah, but I, I that's it's true that f4 comes to tempo, but I I feel like there is a bishop safe... h3. 
Oh, and okay, okay, okay. I, I, and I don't know if we want to provoke. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's in the air. No, it's tough to play this. And oh, but now F, actually now sides. we get it by force. F four. Or by bishop eight. Okay, rook c eight. Also a clever move. Actually, very clever. Move. Oh, rookie five. Then he plays f four. Man, but Hobson is so tricky. Really tricky guy. Actually, now I'm wondering he if this. Is, yeah, rookie five f four, and then he's going to take on e four. That's his plan. He's going to actually oh, give up right. the exchange and go rook e two. Rook d two. Oh, why didn't want to allow that? No, wait, wait, f four. Oh no, no, the rook's saying sorry, 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 sorry. Rook b eight. No, but now f four is a huge threat. Obviously, okay, f four. You have to play. Otherwise, you can't really rook c eight. Nope. He wants to draw. Rook eight moves. Surely not. He might. He is, no, he's not. Uh, King H2. He's a better. Okay. He's a better bullet player. I think Sanal. Right. Sanal is a better bullet player. He's playing for winning. He sacrifices anyway, even without f4. I don't yeah, know he about this. He I'm just wants to have an easier time to make some moves. But I think, I think objectively, this is probably okay for Black somehow. Bishop e6 exactly. Rook b7, c4. Does he want to play and put the bishop on d3? That's what I think he should. Now he goes back to c4. Okay. N now he's rook pinned. D6. Now, yeah, rookie. Ooh, but the rookie rook six. Rook d6, king f5. King f5. F5. F no, but this is f3 and g4. Well, rook c6 is also good. Oh, and you just start hunting for all of those. Now, I mean, once the exchange sack happened, I think it was very, very clear that Malakov is losing the threat of the, lose, just losing the, the course of the game. Yeah. Rook B6. Rook B6, yeah. Rook E2. Far from perfect is White's conversion, but it's good enough. Okay. Two kings G1. Yes. We take another pawn. Ah, oh, but then King G4 and the King. Last chance. Gets active and Rook B6, Rook C6, King. Oh, no, King G3 doesn't King, work. King, Sorry. Yeah, almost did. Yeah, almost this did. Is Sparta. Yeah. Now you could sack on E6 and absolute zero need to do that. No, but and Malakoff is hanging tough here. King g4. Back to f5, f5. he goes. What about g Okay. We take, yes, check. Ah, now you're out the pin. Now you're out and the pin. Bishop b3. Bishop b3, stable. Oh, uh, no, sorry. We, we, we blunder the rook. I beg your pardon. Well, not the I guess the rook with the f6 pawn. And no, this is easy. There's no, he has no chance here. Zero. He's too so, long. So, yeah. Maybe well, some. Unless White accidentally repeats. But he found a way here. Look at this. Yeah, he's so slippery. Oh my god, how is he doing this? Oh, Rook take the bishop. Rook take the bishop. Take the bishop. I mean, yeah, that this is the way to win in, in bullet when you've got five extra seconds. Yeah, because now you can pre-move everything. He takes the yeah. rook and he wins the game and he dispatches Maxim Motlakov, Bahops and all. Very, very impressive. Not perfect, but he got the job done. Wow. And that means there are only three players, Lawrence, with four out of four. That's what always happens in these qualifiers, how quickly the field at the top thins out. We've got Vahap, Sam Sevian, and Mitraba. That's Mitraba Guha, Grandmaster from India. And they will face off against each other. It's going to be a great round five, Lawrence. Absolutely, yeah. Three players on 100%. A bunch of players on three and a half, not out of it by any means. Remember, it's a nine round Swiss, so still plenty of action. The first place player will go through, and then there will be a, a, a match between players in second and third position to decide who else will go through. Indeed. And before we get to all of that, we will take it to a short break, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching the Chess.com Global Championship. This is playing qualifier number five. You do not want to miss the rest of the tournament Coming up on the other side of this short break, we will be right back.
Mis amigos, welcome back to the chess.com global championship play and qualifier number five here, bringing you the coverage GM Daniel Nerdisky, international master Lawrence Trent. Round five is underway. Three players with a perfect score. The top, well, two players qualify from each play and qualifier event. Lawrence, I have here the game between Mitraba, Indian GM, and uh, of course, the one and only Sam Sevian. Yeah, and uh, Sam Sevian just with you know on fire at the moment. We've been talking about his recent success in classical in Blitz. He's playing brilliant chess. Finally, making that big breakthrough that everybody has expected he would make, uh, which is obviously great for him, great for American chess. Um, and now playing against Mitraba, who I don't know very well, uh, so will be interesting to see. Sam heavily outrating him, but um, already in a, a slightly uh, precarious position here, Sam. He's played a slightly odd King's Indian type line, but I'm not sure if White is treating it in the most uh, critical way, let's say. Yeah, it, that, it definitely looks precarious is a good word, dubious. For black but this is what sam sevian does i mean he plays fast even in these positions where you know i could see a lot of players just agonizing you know for many minutes but for now everything is structurally sound i think sam could probably go rook a to d8 or something like that but he takes d5 no i oh, like b5 this. and b5 exactly uh -huh. i like this if if, if white uh, allows cd5 b5 that almost always solves your problems in these structures and you never really want to go ED5 here as white either because Ooh. you lose, yeah, you lose you lose a lot of the uh, the sort of uh, mm, flexibility that you have. So it's actually a bit of a nasty spot. And another thing is you, you can consider knight takes D5 and try and play against the back with D pawn, but then black plays bishop C6, and right. I'm, I'm not completely convinced. That works and ed5 is on the board and i don't think uh, white be. it's an ugly looking move yeah it, it gives black also suddenly a poor majority on the king side and often f5 will come if and if if uh, organized correctly and once black gets that in actually the three pawns on d6 b7 and a5 hold up the four pawns of d5 c4 b3 and a2 so this is actually this is not what you want on the white side of fianchetto kings india yeah, no, not at all. And another problem is that white is nowhere near playing b4. Like if white had a bishop on b2 and a pawn on a3, we'd be having a different conversation because white would already set his queenside pawns in motion. As it stands, that's not even a viable plan. But how is Sam Sevian going to expand in the center? Is he going to play bishop f5? Is he going to move the knight away from f6? As you pointed out, what do you think is going to be his plan i mean i think what i think black has got actually a number of ideas one idea i it looks a bit random and looks a bit silly is it, what, what about playing you've got h6 knight h7 you've got king h8 knight g8 these old ideas of just trying yep, to spar of yeah <laughs> but no he goes rogisia also an idea of course because the c3 knight is just a little bit loose there as well so i don't know exactly how sam is planning all the c Maybe his idea is even to play something like A4, try and organize A4 at the right moment to loosen the C4 form. But I have a ridiculous sure. idea. Go on. Knight takes E5 and D6. It doesn't look ridiculous at all to me. Because I feel like you get two pawns for the piece and then you get some sort of an initiative. Absolutely. And if you remove the anchor out of Black's position, the evil bar doesn't hate it, actually. No, I, I like it, Daniel. It's not a ridiculous idea at all. But he doesn't do it. Boo. 91. No, very like negative. by the very by the book, but Yeah, but I don't like it. I don't like yeah, it. It's a little too vegetarian the way White's playing. Just <laughs> not you know. You're gonna get heat for that one. Daniel. I know. You're gonna, you're gonna get heat. No, I mean I'm not vegetarian, but I, I most, I mean, I, I eat a lot of tofu and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to cover my, cover my butt now. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, 
you're you know um, exactly what i'm trying to do now you're yeah you're uh you're um uh, what's the word uh, t- uh, vegetarian aficionado um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> i actually have been H5. vegetarian since birth <laughs> H5, I like H5, actually, as it goes. I, I quite like this. Expanding, sometimes threatening H4. As white, you don't really want to go H4 because then black can land a piece on G4, disturbing. Uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm borrowing all of these. I'm borrowing all of these leco words now. This is what happens when you, when you analyze with Peter. Uh, so I, I really like H5, actually. Yeah, no, it's, it's just a great... I don't even I don't even want to call it a sound a waiting move, but it's just one of those annoying moves that you have to, you know, that you have to reckon with. An F four by Mitraba, kind of sensing that his, <laughs> you know, his fingers are slipping away from the ledge. But man, this is this puts so much strain on his position. Goodness me, it's an ugly move to play F four. Optically, looks completely wrong. Feels like you know it doesn't connect well with the position really dislike it and i like bishop h6 because now ef4 is coming and you can't easily defend that pawn at all even h4 is an idea just oh. again it's very loose not I just really an idea. Dislike I, would call it a, I would call it a big threat <laughs> i i really i really dislike f4 actually i think that's a serious serious mistake and a very surprising move from a grandmaster but it actually illustrates just how un- unhappy with this position. Well, Lawrence, do you like F4? I feel like you are pretty impressed with that move. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> not, a, not a huge fan. <laughs> no, I agree completely. And I think Sam Sevian can take on F4 right now. Like, okay, there's an X-ray against this knight, but what's important is the bishop on D7 guarding the weak square in B5. Right. So, EF, so- EF, mm-hmm. I guess we go EF. I mean, well, I mean, what else is? Oh, Queen B six. Oh, Queen B six. Okay. okay, but uh, okay. So yeah, sorry, he throws in the intermezzo. So we have to do something about this king. We probably put it on probably H one, right? Yes, exactly. The way so, my coach um, always taught me to decide is like you want to avoid potential checks. So I think we both have the same instincts. Like it's not that knight G four is viable right now but it could be 20 moves down the line i think it was also that well i think it was also yeah h4 this is a very what is this move this is this is very odd but i don't why didn't he take on f what 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 was it that was something scared him some jump but i don't see it i think he takes that for just an advantage for black the ebabar hates this move no i I would suppose it's because of i don't know what it what it's because Bishop C5? Apparently that is correct. And the idea is now to bring this knight into the game with tempo. Oh, wow. That's very clever. But it's no, not it's... plus two. I mean, this is this is anybody's game still. He wants to go knight H5 here, right? Although then there's like this dominating move, knight E4, yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, so Sam kind of overestimated his chances here. And somehow White's knights are getting into the game. Knight d3, knight takes e5, c5. Hmm. Goodness me. And Mitrava's still with five minutes. So this is, uh, you know, it's, it, it's enough time to, to, put, to put him away. And actually, Sam is probably thinking, what, what happened actually? In this? He's <laughs> You know, now knight d3 is extremely strong, you would expect, yes? Well, h4 was a big mistake, I think it's pretty clear now. But, you know, I, I'm still old old school in the King's Indian sense, where I see that black is a dark squared bishop and white doesn't. Yeah. And I feel like it's only a matter of time before the dark squares start, you know, biting white in the you-know-what. Yeah. I liked knight h5 there again. I don't know why that move... Oh, again, knight e4. I keep on missing knight e4. He sacks the exchange for the dark squares. So Sam is basically yeah. trying to say, I've got all the dark squares. And you know, the Evolver actually didn't like knight takes c5. There you, you go. You can't blame him. I guess we're going to see like rook f1 here. Is that the... No, rook f1, bishop f4 maybe stabilizes. Mm. Um, but then... Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. No, it, white, white's task is not easy here. 
This is not, not an easy position. Also, so he takes, which is a, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't even consider this move as why. I, I just seven. assumed you couldn't take it. Yes. You just line it up, queen e2. Now I start to get uh, panicky. Queen d6. Yeah, yes. the storm clouds are starting to gather around around white's pieces and white's king and it's so easy to blunder in a position like this knight rookie three what about bishop h6 here again just disturbing or bishop f5 also makes sense but okay bishop f5 so for the time being black controls all of the key infiltration scores e8 c5 e4 but obviously there's insufficient compensation. You can't play knight h5 now because if rook takes right. f5 and the pawn is overloaded. Yeah, maybe b6. Hmm. So what is, yeah, what is black supposed to do here? Um. Because white controls everything somehow all of a sudden yeah i uh, i mean it's 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 not straightforward at all is it no and it, it's weird how this game turned around we were both thinking i think we were kind of under the sam sevian spell i feel like where we just assumed everything he was doing was great but i think he might be close to lost hmm Queen f3. Queen f3. This might be a clever move because not only are you threatening Queen h3, but knight e4 suddenly is in the position and f7 is hanging. So this could be a very clever move. Yeah, I, yes. I, 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 I fear for Sam here, actually. White's king is the safest it's been. I mean, all game. No danger at all. The pawn on g3 is impotent and weak. Um... Queen c5, and apparently this loses. Oh, 94. Queen f7. Indeed. It's over. Exactly. If he plays 94, the game is over. He has yeah. to find that. I mean, it's a very easy move to find. Very, and he wastes absolutely no time. And he will deal a very difficult blow to Sam Sevian in round five. Mitraba Guha. Who would have thought? Five out of five points. Just crazy. Yeah, Mitraba Guha, I mean... He was born in 2001, mm -hmm. so he's a young guy, 20-ish years old. His rapid, uh, sorry, his feeder rating is only 2490. So he's not a, I mean, he's obviously a good player, but he's not a, uh, when we think of the top Indian players, he's certainly not in that, uh, in that grouping, Queen D7 and um yeah queen g4 is good enough here yeah this should d6 okay, d6 queen f3 is queen also fine d6 and distract queen f7 also good queen f4 mm, yeah, okay i mean it's fine d6 and put the bishop on d5 is... yeah i want to i i want to say in such situations that i've seen crazier things happen but i actually have not so no <laughs> There's just no way a grandmaster can can mess this up uh, in normal circumstances. No, no, yeah, you're you're right. And Sam is going to resign, I think, any second now. Bishop takes b7. Rook g6. B7, b7, c6 is good enough. Rook g3 is good enough. Okay, so huge and there's resignation from your trouble. Let's go to uh, to this game. What have we got here? So Santo Blue, that's Vahapsanal. He dropped down to play the highest rated three and a half, and that is indeed Ralph Mamadov, Baku Boulevard. And it appears that Black is the one playing for a win here, if I'm not mistaken, because he's got the outside passer. Although White has a passer in his own right, of course. I don't know, actually, because... Hmm. Knight G6 is coming next. Okay. Bishop, Bishop d4. 
bishop d4 or bishop c3. Cool. Yeah, because this is you fine. can't King play d6. knight e5, right? Under any circumstance. Because I can take it. Can I or not? Maybe you can take it and go king h3, but then black has b6 and c5, so it's... And then I have my a pawn as well, right? It right. Gets very... <laughs> it gets very tricky. Bishop a7 I like. Ah, this is a very good move, actually. King e5? Uh, king e5 is clever, because now he wants to come in to b4 if you give the check. So we pass. Good. And then, and then back to f2 here. goes the king. Uh, and now you get, now you triangulate. King f1, knight h4, king e2, knight h 4 Mm. Show them the class. Yes, baby. King F1, man. Show them Varetsky. the triangulation. Oh, and, and by the way, if you move the knight back, there's bishop B8 check, and bishop takes F4. So you actually exactly. need to go to H4. Look, he did it. He did. He actually did it, but no, but he Black actually is in Zeus did it. What does Black do? Move the king back, maybe? And then bishop B8. Now bishop yeah, B8. But King g5, repositioning the king to make sure the pawn is protected. Bishop d6, domination. There we go. King f6. Yeah, but you're not making progress. I might not be making progress on the board, but psychologically, I feel like I'm making progress. Okay, bishop, so we triangulate again. Bishop b8, and then bishop b6. Yes, also good. Yeah. King f6. King h2, h2. good. Because knight h4, you have to actually... Be sure you can play that. What? Ooh, now. Bishop D8! Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh my god. I mean, he literally had to do nothing. Just like King King E6, King F7. The knight was perfect. That's it. You know, oh my but god. I, there was some there was something about the way White was playing that I I can see why Black blundered. It, it's you know, he was making no, the, all these beautiful uh, triangulation. Yeah, it was it was it was really really nice. Oh my God, what a ridiculous game! And Mitrava, that means he is the all alone with five out of five. But he's got a bunch of hungry grandmasters tailing him at four and a half. So his journey is very very far from being over. There's a couple of games still remaining. Okay, that was ridiculous. Uh, da Dania, how how do you you commentated on a bunch of these tournaments? Uh, what mm -hmm. tends to be the winning score? Yeah, that's a good question. So it's different here than in the RCC. Um, I think the winning score here is actually sometimes seven and a half. Seven right. and a half or seven generally gets you into the top three. Although last time we had a situation where four players, as uh, the Argentinian Grandmaster delivers checkmate on H2, we had a situation where there were four players tied for first, and uh, that mm. meant that one of them actually would cancel out by tie breaks, and that somebody was Hrant Malkumian, who was leading the tournament at some point, but had the worst tie breaks of all four. Okay. A6, goodbye. The... Is it takes? King C... Takes. A7, King A7. C6. Ah, A7, sorry. Just uh, Actually, sorry, you just... Get there. You get there. I mean, I could probably also play king a5 there and rub it in, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's all over. So Benjamin Bach is going to move to four out of five as he defeats I am last hero. And I think that basically concludes the games from this round. Oh, no, we've got a couple more. We've got a couple more. Alrighty. Magsy Potato. Fide Master. Maxi Potato. I think mm -hmm. that's a play on uh, Magsy Bogues, which is Magnus Carlsen. Play on Magnus Carlsen. Now, that's a lot yeah. of puns on so many levels. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, that's... Okay, so that's... one guy with five out of five. And Liam Lequang on four and a half, staying He's in back. touch, as is Baku Boulevard, as is Jospin. I'm going to go for a Jospin victory today. I, you know, I just feel it. I feel him. I feel his power. I'm going for a Jospin uh, win. I feel like he, he's going to make the top three, but I don't know who I think is going to win. I mean, Raf Mamedov is generally my pick for like anything, okay. but 
The way Mitraba... Well, actually, no, that's a lie. Mitraba didn't actually play that well against... Uh, um, oh my god, I'm completely blanking. <laughs> Uh, against oh Sevian, 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 Sevian. Sorry, yes. uh, but now he's got a, a, an incredibly tough task ahead of him. Ralph Mamadov with the white pieces is unbelievably dangerous. He is. And you please e4 and just checkmates you whatever you do. So let's see what Mitrava chooses in the opening. I think he's a Karokan player, maybe a G6 player. I don't remember. Yeah, Karokan. I, I, I might have to uh, just, I'll be back in five. I forgot my glasses. So I wear glasses now, Daniel. This is what happens when you get old, mate. No worries. Right? Take your time. I will. I'm just, it, they're just there. I'll be two seconds, but I am now struggling a little bit. So I'll be right <laughs> back. I'll be right there. In the meantime, we're watching Ralph Mamadov taking on Mitrava. Hope you're enjoying the coverage thus, thus far from the chess.com global championship plan qualifier. Um, so we've got five, one person on five out of five, and he's essaying the Karo Khan. Kind of a weird, weird variation. Uh, it, it, this looks like an advanced Karo, but it actually wasn't really an advanced. And Black has managed to develop the bishop outside the pawn chain, which is really, really good. And C4 by Ralph Mamadov, typical. Creating massive complications right out of the gate. Typical. Thematic, very in his style. And very, I like very. it. CD, he's just going to take back. He also has to analyze CD5, but uh, no, I prefer knight d4, of course. Takes, takes. Now I maybe knight c6. I don't love this for black. Nah, knight c6 is a good move, though. Knight c6 feels like the professional move. And then Mamadov's going to like sack on e6 or something. He's just like very, he loves that kind of stuff. I think he's going to. Um, no, I don't think he's going to go knight before. I think he's going to... What is Ralph Mamadov going to do? He's going to go knight b5. You think so? Yes. He's going to give the e-pawn. You just don't care, huh? I don't care. I literally don't even care. I feel like he's going to give the e-pawn and then he's going to play c... Well, you have c takes d5. So it, it's not even technically a sacrifice, I think. Yeah, that's true, actually. And if knight b5 a6, then you could take on d5. Ah... Yeah, this is the Come other on, one. Ralph. But this is okay because now you can gain time with black. No, knight d4, knight d4, bishop c5. Can you play like this? And just try and get yes, developed. Most, most certainly can. But white will probably play rook d1 there. And I guess Ralph is just aiming for a small advantage. Yeah. He, he's not going for anything, anything uh, super major. You have to do something here as black. You can't just play bishop. You can't allow cd5. So you have to, you have to do something. Yeah, CD5, CD5 forces ED5 and then E6, and that's obviously, obviously out of the question, as you said. No, black, black is actually worse here. I think a little bit practical. Wait, is there knight takes E5? Yeah, there is, but uh, I don't think you're not optimistic about it. I mean. What does white do exactly? Yeah, my work actually. Okay, let's put it on. I mean, it's it's not a. It's yeah, yeah. Not let's a, pull up the board. Yeah, knight takes e five. So knight e five, knight d four, and I actually think that, I think that black's black's doing all right here. I mean, yes. Bishop is coming out, but it's all moot point. He doesn't do it. He goes knight takes d four and knight b six. So yeah, I, I I get this because he wants to recapture on d five with the knight. But uh, something about it that I don't love. So CD, knight d5, and now rook d1, yes. Oh, knight f5 could potentially be a problem here. The queen b5 might, check to follow. It might land, yes. But you have to be careful there because maybe queen b7 and the endings, you know, for example, if I go bishop e7. Yeah, good line. F5, bishop e7, knight f5, I take queen b5, I go queen b7. Yep. I, I claim I'm analysis fine. board here with queen b5 check, queen d7 in this position, and you claim that black is fine. And you're absolutely right. It's important to realize here that, yeah, there is a slight deficiency in the castle's pawn long. There is also castle's long as possible, but yes, b6. Oh yes, it is. In or fact, you wait, could, you could, yeah, you could, 
Go on, you do it. You do it. You yeah, do it. yeah, yeah. H yeah. Oh, I blunder the pawn. Yeah. I think we saw exactly. Oops, no, no, not that, not that move. Cast. I love this move. Castles queenside. Attack the rook. Threaten checkmate. Win the game. That's an Eric Rosen moment. Oh no, my pawn. Right. Uh, exactly. Whoa. H five. What? 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 What school of chess did this guy go to? I tell you what, you would not see. Oh, uh, and not against. Oh my God, Bishop Don't G5. do that against. Don't do that against Ralph. No, don't no, do no. that against Ralph. He's the worst person to play a move like that against. No, 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 no. This is. This it, is and now you can't even castle. Now you no 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 you can't play H five. That's that's a that's crazy talk. That's, that's crazy a, that's, talk. It's a, just a very <laughs> very bad move. You can take take and go rook c one here. You go rook c1 here. Just put the rook on the semi-open file. I mean, or knight f5 if you want to. Or knight b5 actually exists. Sorry, knight d6 check is difficult to stop. Yeah, because you can't... I mean, you, you're you going to have to castle and give up h5, but that's a that's a full pawn. I mean, it's not over. It's far from over, but... Knight f5 h, looks strong as well. h5 did not land at all. No. Ugh, this is... Uh, I think black has to take and castle and give up the pawn and... You know, try try his best. Ugly stuff. Ex I mean, you could also play queen g5 and allow the check on d6 and go king f8. I don't love it, but no. something. Queen f3. No, this is this is terrible. Terrible. H5 was just. H5 was actually like unbelievably bad because it not only does it not develop but it actually prevents you from ever castling uh, it's such an it's, it's i i don't even know how he came up with the move like i don't even get the move so it's it a reminds very... me of something do you know this game fisher as a uh, wolfgang unsicker the top east german grandmaster is playing fisher in a night orc game and uh it, it, it might have been a mouse slip uh but fisher ah. Touched, Fisher played this move h5 in a random knight or position. And uh, what had happened is he had touched his h pawn while Unsucker was away, away from the board. Right. And he realized that his intended move, which was h6, allows some sort of a bishop sacrifice and a win. So rather than retracting the move, the witnesses say that he could have pretended to adjust the pawn, but very honorably decided to move the pawn to h5, which, is, which was suicidal and he lost the game. All right. I actually don't know. I can't recall the game. I might have seen it. I, I don't. I don't know the game though. But yeah, I mean the, the H five, possibly a mouse slip. It's it, maybe he wanted H six, although H six isn't exactly a great move in its own right. Queen B seven there. I mean, it's probably okay, but he did it very quickly. Ah, rook E seven. Wait, rook, yes. but rook B eight. Rook B eight. Ah, uh, rook B eight. But just, I, I thought he was going to go rook. AD1 there and just bring the other guy in and then force through with E6. I, I, I this might yeah, be he, a, yeah, yeah. Like if we go back just even one more, was it one more move here? Yeah, something like this. I didn't think he was gonna, I thought he was just gonna do this. No, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. This, this, and if you go preferred. king G7, now I go rook D6, queen A2, we don't care, we go E6, we block the checks with rook D1. And then we got queen e5 check, and we might even have time to create Luft. We just go h3, and and we just crush. Yeah. No, this is over, and I completely agree. And I think Ralph might have missed rook. I, I don't know which rook black should put on b8. I, may, maybe the h rook to, to avoid giving up a7 also. And there's some drawing chances. If you get into any end game, you just know for a fact that there will be drawing chances. Good stuff by Mitraba. Well, this is the best he can hope for. I mean, look at this. By far. Uh, it, it's still probably uh, over, but not like, it's amazing how easy it is to screw up a rook and pawn. It's just, it's it's very dicey. There's a back rank issue for white, so he has to invest the tempo to to get out, like for example, f4, but now rook d2 comes, and yeah, you tell me if this is winning. I King h6. Yeah, this I... is not... It is winning. It is winning, but uh, like, I'll give you, you a proposed work. plan. Okay. You okay? So you you take on a seven. Black takes on b two. Yeah. So I was gonna say you play h four. 
Yeah. Then if, if White attacks the F pawn, then you play G3, but you don't have to rush with that move. Then mm -hmm. you bring your rook to A8 and your pawn to A7, as is mm -hmm. tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you somehow win the pawn on E6. That's sort of the alt the crux of it. This pawn on E6, I think, is going to lose black the game. So you think there's a way for white to sna snake the king in via C5, D6, E7, and, yeah, and avoid yeah. the check? It seems basically. to me. It, see, it seems to me that that's possible. Now it's not totally one-sided because black's also going to hunt for white's kingside pawns. No, but now rook A6, uh, rook C6, rook C2. Important also to note that it's never like it would be great if there was a stalemate opportunity here, but there isn't because black always has g6, g5. So there's no desperado rook ideas here. So rook right. c2 or check, you put the rook behind. Maybe you, is there an argument to, you know, to not advance the pawn so quickly and, and go with the king first? This is a bit more added protection. Oh, you mean hide behind the pawn? Yeah, either hide behind the pawn or just use the fact that, you know, what, what is he doing? Okay. C3, back and forth they go for the time being. White could go... Oh, no, 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 no. King H3 actually locks the king in. The, uh, what? Wait, wait. Oh. Huh. What does he want to do? I'm trying to figure it out. This is all very unusual. Okay. Rook a2, like where's the win going to come from? What is the king ever going to do here? Why would you put your king on h3? This is absolutely bizarre stuff. Well, because because he was afraid of losing the g3 pawn. He was afraid that if he would have uh, evacuated his king to the, to the center, the black would have taken g3 and then all the pawns would have collapsed. In all my years of playing chess, I've never been afraid of losing the g3 pawn. Right, especially in a position like this. <laughs> Look at no, this. It's a draw. It's a draw. Look at He's this. gonna hold it. He's gonna hold it. King and H7. Now you just play King H7, and it's this is just woeful. back to A2. Back to A2, to A2. and A2. the King. That's I think that way. Oh, 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 oh! He's gonna move his rook around to G2. So, He's gonna extricate his King. Extricate the demons. But how yeah, easy yeah. is this? Rook A1? Rook A or Rook A Rook A6 you can keep on the third on the on the sixth rank. Yeah. No, this is should this be a draw. So easy? It still doesn't look conclusive to me. Well, the engine has no idea what's going on. Plus 2.4 is like that could be anything. Whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa! Really, Riley? Really? E6? No, E6, E6! And now what? what Rook A6. Wasn't, no. wasn't E6 winning on the spot? Wait, yeah, Black couldn't have even stopped the pawn. What is he doing with the king? <laughs> this is in. This is like, wow. Rook A6. Yeah, there have been so many missed opportunities in this game. Rook C6. Black is treading water. No, but, but okay. I mean, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm kind of shocked. I mean, Ralph Mamelov is not known for his in-game uh, finesse, but come on. I mean. But E6 was like really, really child's play. E6. I think he, I think he might still be able to win this. He's going to go like rook B3, and then he's going to hope that black blunders his rook. <laughs> the whole routine. This is, this is crazy. Craziness. Cray cray. Rook, rook d4 and rook d6, I think, should be attacked. Oh, okay. But then. But then I go uh, rook b2? Yeah, and, and then I, I'm trying to calculate e6. King e3. King h3. King, I actually might try king h3 there, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> There's like some mating ideas. Yeah, yeah, you have to be careful. If your rook. And Ralph is not finding the way. Yeah, he keeps coming back to this F2 square, but there's no there's no there there. There's no prospects there. Okay, back to C6 goes. Mitraba, if he saves this game, that would be insane. Yes. That would be insane. 
you know, the game was like over in our mind. Wow. All right. Okay. Well, um, this is Ralph. This is the top game, but that's not the only game. And uh, we also have Sam Sevian, who is losing a second game in a row, Lawrence, against Vladislav Kovalyov. Well, this is toast for white. Exchange down, Black's landing on F3, protected pass Bourne. This is not even close. There's almost close to zero swindling opportunities. It's not like there's some ideas. And that might mean Sam Sevian is kind of basically not going to be in contention. Um, yeah, no, you can't lose two games like this in the middle no. of the tournament and then hope no. to, you know, hope to qualify. I guess seven out of nine is still a chance, but he's going to have to be absolutely perfect. Okay, so this All is right. a win for Vladislav Kovalyov, barring a miracle. We also have an interesting position in Benjamin Box game. Both of these players have four to four and an FM. But don't be fooled by his. Title, he's, I think, close to 2,500 from Azerbaijan. Riyad Samadov. Oh. Well, yeah, if he's 2,500 and he's an FM, that's normally... The yeah. last guy who was 2,500 and an FM was uh, a guy whose name began with Gary and ended in... Uh, As Parov. Asparov? <laughs> yeah. Then and Parov. we all know what happened there. Actually, Gary Kasparov, for all of you who don't know, went straight from FM to GM. He didn't even ever have the IM title if I remember correctly. Yeah, there have only been a couple of players like that. I, I know Larry... Okay, Queen takes G6. I know Larry Christensen uh, was like that too, who just was competed he? in the uh, US Seniors. Yeah? He was, yeah. I, I FM to GM. I read it in his book. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, a few, so. a few players like that in history. So if he's 2,500 in an FM... Yeah, some people just don't want to pay for the title. They just say, uh, why would I pay... I'm just going to make my GM title. Yeah, that's how you get 2560 FMs. So this guy, uh, Alexei Sorokin. I th Alexei, I don't remember his first name. It was Sor Sorokin. He, he, he studies in Missouri, I think. And he was a 2560 FM. Now he's a GM, but it was the most obnoxious thing ever. Or oh, I'm playing an FM. What's his rating? That's almost 2600 feet, eh? <laughs> right. So... So what's now, going on here? This position is kind of... Uh, you feel better for Black? I mean, it feels... It, it feels... Black is up a pawn and the White King is very flimsy. I actually am calculating rookie eight check and queen takes f7. I think that actually might survive. Wow. I really? think that actually might survive, yeah. If we, we should... pull up the analysis board, I think we're fine. Bishop c5 check, we don't care. No? Yeah, we literally don't care. King g2. And actually, here white might be winning if the king escapes the checks. Because queen g8 is unstoppable. Two. No, but the rook. Oh, three. sorry, the rook is on e8. I beg your pardon. Sorry. You were testing my full full word. No, vision. no, I, I was I was blundering. This is. Okay, so he did something similar. But isn't he going to get mated now? Queen d1 and rook d2? Like, he did exactly uh... the same thing, but in a slightly different version. Yeah, this is just mate. Rook Although, Although, it's yeah. easy to get nervous here, and Bach is down to 38 seconds. Rook d2, here he goes. Let's watch. Queen, Queen g1. One. King f4. Queen, Queen h2. Two. King f5, and there's no more checks. No checks. Oh, my God. Black is risking. King f5. King f5, Queen b1, Rook e4. Rook e4. And plays it immediately. It's okay. Rook takes e4, queen, queen g6. Oh my god, queen h2, queen h2. Again, you go king f5. Don't take with a pawn. Yes. And then don't walk into the check. Yes. King d5, c3 for the fans. Oh, oh my god, that's dirty. <laughs> that's Holy smokes. Dirty. And this queen reminds me. Oh, he played it. Oh, he, he didn't, didn't see it. it. Look at you. He didn't see it. Oh, and now it's a drop. Well, it, yeah, cool. it is a drop. Benjamin just sort of already gave it up. Let me show this real fast. Oh, my God, what a chance. What a chance. Is it C any good? I don't know. Three. It's winning. Oh, no, it's not because BC. 
Oh, sorry, he blocks the check, you see? Oh my God, look <laughs> at that, C4, that's crazy. That's lovely, just a lovely idea. So white is in fact fine. They were right to go for the draw. But Benjamin Buck, he missed a win there briefly, um, yes. but it was a difficult one. And Chess Brainiac is uh, a, good, a good friend, also lives in Charlotte. And uh, let's see, let's see what his technique is like. I um, look at this. I can I can do king knight and bishop with under thirty seconds anywhere on the board. I've tried it numerous times. Anywhere on the board is impressive. I let's see if he gets his knight to c seven, and he does. Well done. And knight to d five. Nope, 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 nope. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Knight c seven. Okay, no, he doesn't. Oh no! Oh man. No, but this okay. is a oh, fundamental goodness. lack of chess education. Yeah. As a 2100, you got to know this. Like, you got to you gotta be able to do it yeah. down pat. Yeah. This is... Oh, dear. Ay, ay, ay. I hope that Kaisa was wasn't watching. Um, oh, well, the commentators we... were watching, though. That should be enough. <laughs> All right, so the, the round is... Oh! Pretty... Another one? <laughs> we had two of them, huh? We had two and both of them. were not converted. No, well, this one. This one. Yeah, uh, okay, we can show it. Let's do it for the fans, Daniel. So I'm happy to. What we're uh, going to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so let's pull up that other game because this is, um, this where Black went wrong is right. Okay, wait, there was an earlier moment. Right here, right here. There's a W technique that you have to draw with your knight. And rather than playing king d6, you got to go knight d5. And Lawrence, you're the expert, so correct me if I'm wrong. Well, yeah, no, it's correct. So the, the knight goes from b5, c7, d5, e7, f5. So you look at you can draw the w like that exactly. The important point is just very quickly. We, we, yeah, we can we can go there in a second, but very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, if we go back, just very very quickly, go back further because actually, what if White understands here after knight d5? Sorry, uh, yeah. So after no, keep on going. So where were we? Uh, bishop a7 king d8 95 yeah hit uh, sorry 94 so in general white wants to stay towards the corner that's the opposite color of the bishop so king c8 is a move but then you land knight e7 check king d8 and now you come over and what you're trying to do is you're trying to force that king over to the h8 square the dark square where you're going to live a knight mate and after king e8 you go king e6 and when white insists on staying you give a check and after king e8, now very important, you waste a tempo, bishop a5 or c7, it doesn't really matter. Now the king comes over again to f8, you give that knight f5, and you always want to go into that g7. When you go back in like a sword, that's how I teach my students, you want to make sure it's with check. So after king e8, you give the check, king f8, king f6, forced king g8, right? And now king g6, king f8, and bishop d6, Bang. check again, king g8, and then once more, waste a tempo, bishop I tend to prefer the bishop a bit. It's further funny, out. It's yeah, yeah. I don't know why this is a habit for me. And then, yeah. once you have the right configuration, the mate is easy. But this is why you can only mate, only the bishop can mate, and you have to be in the right corner, the same color as the bishop. And very, very, very quickly before, because I know the next game is going to be in progress, go to the trickier line where white tries to escape uh, the other side. So after knight d5, white yep. tries to go king e8, king d6, and now says, okay, I'm going to so, flee. When I teach people, this is the yeah. this is what they fear. They're like, okay, but the king escapes, and it's an illusion. It doesn't. You still go knight e seven, and I know there's multiple techniques, but yes. what I was taught is bishop bishop e three, correct, and then you just sort of shoulder the king back toward the eighth rank, and then yeah. you resort back to the to the same mechanism. And what's beautiful is the knight and bishop. If you actually highlight the squares there after bishop b four, Daniel. Um, when yeah. the king is on f7, the knight and bishop actually control all of these f6, g6, g7. All it's these squares, so they, it's boxed. And then after king e8, king e6, king d8, bishop b6 check, you get into the line we just looked at, bishop a5. Yeah. And, okay, in honor of and, in honor of Lawrence Trent, I'll play bishop a5 rather than bishop c7. Yeah. Yes. But you you got to know this. Um, yes. You got to know this this mate, and there have been there have been some embarrassing cases. Um, you know, even in cl classical games, because well, everything's the, harder over the board. Mm -hmm. There's the famous. Anna I hate to say it. Sorry. Anna Ushenina. Yeah, the Anna Ushenina, who the the former women's world champion was unable to deliver this mate with with like 15 minutes on the clock. Yeah, it's it was a. Uh, 
Well, I, I don't want to come. Unexplainable, completely unexplainable. Yeah. Just a just a, a mental collapse. Because just, obviously she knows the mating technique. There's no yes. question in my mind. Something yeah. happened, but not to deliver mate in a classical game is about as close to uh, unforgivable as possible at this level. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. but things happen. You know, in football, when I think of football, there are open goals sometimes and you know there's a one foot tap in and the guys you know there are tons of examples in sports where unforgivable acts happen that's part of the game yeah i mean it's it, it happens now the standings are as follows mitraba despite the draw well despite the draw he saved a dead loss position against rafa Menov, um in the previous round and nobody has caught up with him five and a half out of six he is alone and a oh my god look at how many people have five this is ridiculous. 11 people have five out of six. How is that even possible? Like, what's the math behind that? Anyway, we'll talk about the math later. We're going to take a quick break, refill our coffees. We're here commentating the chess.com global championship play and qualifier number five. Round seven of nine is coming up right on the other side of this short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the chess.com global championship grandmaster daniel narditsky i am lauren strent bringing you the coverage in this morning qualifier there's one more after this one at 10 a.m pacific time 1 p.m eastern time you will not want to miss it either and we hope you're not missing the action here from round seven of nine the top finisher in the swiss qualifies automatically second and third place play out a two game 10 plus zero mini match to determine the second qualifier from each play in tournament. Okay, so Indian GME Travaguha in clear first. He's got five and a half out of six. And Lawrence, another tough challenge ahead of him as he 
faces uh, none other than Le Kwang Lim, who recovered from that first round scare and is currently in second place by tie breaks. Or yeah, tie absolutely. Second. I mean, you, ne you never roll out Le Kwang Lim, former world blitz champion, if I remember correctly, um, is obviously extremely well experienced at these time controls. So, you know, you expect Le Kwang Lim to be up there. Um, and you expect him to actually have a really decent chance, but not a massive fan of his position so far as black. That said, it's probably not too bad. Yeah, he's actually had quite a few tough positions. If you think about his last two games against Sevi and against Ralph Mamadov, he, he's been in trouble out of the opening. Yeah, he um, really has. Yeah. He really, really has. And, uh, okay, but he might be thinking, you know what, this is actually a bit of a a bit of a chance here um, against Mitra. But let's see. Rook C1, Rook C8. Yeah, Knight C4 is a move, but it doesn't actually do anything. That's the <laughs> I problem. I think I'm getting it around to F5 maybe. But oh, okay. Yeah, I agree. No, no, that's that's valid. That's I, I, that's that's very valid, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I was... <laughs> Knight C4, look at me. I'm so cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, I actually, the more I look at it, the more I start to really like it, Daniel. I, he's probably thinking about it. I mean, he's taking taking a good chunk of time here. You could also play something more neutral like E3 and Queen E2, something of that nature. But then you're walking into shenanigans with like Knight B4 and Bishop A6, so. Exactly. Okay, he takes it. Yeah, this is the other way of playing. Maybe he still goes Knight C4 here, actually, by the way. Absolutely. Um, and he gives Black the, the infamous hanging pawns. Yeah. Pawns that look nice, connected, but they're on semi-open files and are actually targets. They're actually very, very weak pawns if you don't know what you're doing. But of course, if you manage to have active pieces behind them, you can uh, make them work out. But in general... They're actually more of a liability than an asset. Well, I lose on both sides of the hanging pawn structure. When I play with the hanging pawns, they just get captured, and I'm like, okay, now I know what to do when I play against them. And then when I play against them, somehow, you know, none of the same techniques seem to work. So, not my favorite structure for, for either side, actually. <laughs> totally, totally understandable. Knight, uh, so the knight is only for queen b6. The f5 square looks just incredibly juicy, doesn't it? So you, yeah, you, know, you want to put you know, something there. And a knight there, especially, would, would look glorious to me. But, um, okay, yeah, what to do but how are you going to do that? <laughs> well, it's very tough now. Now, now it feels maybe why should just play queen b1, queen a1 in, in uh, standard kind of hippo fashion. And uh, there we Look go. <laughs> there we go. And perfect timing too. Now I was just, I'm always worried about D4 in such positions because once the bishops are traded, the light squared bishops, mm -hmm. okay, white's, I mean, the bishop is kind of the soul of white's position. He goes rook f8, does Le Quang I think he maybe goes rook preferring? d Yes, I mean, he might be preferring. I think you should go rook d1 here. Because bishop d6 might run into knight bc4. That might be a nasty little... Oh, it, it would run into it anyway, though. Like, you you actually don't have to prepare. Oh, yeah, you don't need the rook on d1 even. Like, do you? <laughs> so maybe but you I... make, like, a <laughs> h3. <laughs> I think you should just bring your last piece into action on the semi-open file. I see absolutely no reason why you wouldn't improve the rook to d1 here. Yeah. Rook fd1. He's down to five minutes, though taking a very long time here in these complications. Hmm. What else? I mean, he's got to make a decision here. Way too slow. Way too slow. Come on. Wait up, wait up, wait up, wait up, wait up. Wait up. Breaking news alert. Breaking news? Samuel Sevian won his last game. What? Okay, we... He can, won that can, position? I'm, that's what I'm I mean, saying. I'm, I'm, pulling that, I'm pulling that game up. I, I mean, if that's okay with you. I don't normally do that, but like, what? No, I mean, we have to see that because that's ridiculous. How He's got five out of six. 
how do you how do you win we saw this position and he it has less gets... time what it's okay i mean it's okay okay yeah. okay this is okay. the game over the game is over just over yeah over okay so he over. took and he allowed Five. the queen to go Ooh. yeah a little bit loose a little bit loose so he repeated a bunch of times yeah oh and then he gave up the rook what he oh wanted to God. no he wanted to he thought he was going to queen the pawn and then he didn't see knight f5 or knight takes h5 what is this yeah oh he and, clearly didn't see knight f5 and g takes f5 and the point is you would this is atrocious yeah well, unbelievable didn't. turnaround and samuel sevian he is going to try to make the most out of well kaisa was disgusted on uh the lack of the bishop and knight technique and decided to you know mix things up kaisa had a knight, really at, the knight at, the, at the knight at the bar and you know all hell broke loose. She should be really disgusted at that one. Talking about wow. disgusted, I don't like White's position here very much, but no, maybe it's not. maybe it's a bit unclear. I don't know. I um, hate situations like this when you're like the light squares are going to plague you for the rest of eternity. Although I I mean, I guess I can put the king on h2, and then all of the, I mean, the two key squares are, will be defended. Yeah. Also, c4 hangs. Yeah, I hate it for white. Oh, what about rook c1, rook takes c4? <laughs> Ooh, that's such a nice track. Does it work, queen f1? Um, that is not a question I concern myself with, unfortunately. <laughs> I believe the answer might be no. <laughs> Queen h1, king f2, yeah, I don't think yeah. it does. Well, it, it's messy, but I, I don't think it works. Do you have to spoil the spoil the party? Sorry, I, I mean, they brought me in to spoil the party. <laughs> um, okay, should we go to uh, to another game, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is slowed down. So there's a ton of people on five out of six. Um, one person we have not checked out in a long time is uh okay so we don't have to look at ralph bumetov all the time like wherever i click ralph bumetov is somehow there but i was gonna say shamsidin volkidov uzbek grandmaster who's part of this young group of uzbek players noderbek of right. yakuboyev and shamsidin volkidov super strong blitz player and he's on five out of six and destroying ralph bumetov look at this domination just domination nation him. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, this is monstrous. I mean, this is toast for 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 uh, for black. And is yeah, queen g eight. That's the, the actual threat. threat. And queen takes h seven or taking on d eight, and it's just all she wrote. <laughs> You're gonna just win the rook. That's and beautiful. Some people might say, "Well, wait a second. If we pull up the analysis board here real fast, just show the key line. Rook takes g seven. You can just always have it. to look at yeah and take and, and I just wanted to show that the knight hangs on d eight at the end of the line." So, yeah, complicated line. <laughs> but, you know, got to whip out the analysis board from time to time. No, this is, this is all she wrote. Ralph Mamedov in danger of just being pretty much out of it. Oh, and queen f7, you take in and go rook d7 and pick up the knight. No, a loss here is a disaster. But it is just over, right? I see zero, zero moves for black here. No, that it's just literally... That's it. And he had declined a draw, did Noderbeck. Uh, wait, Noderbeck? Not yes, the, Noderbeck. Also Noderbeck, sorry. Oh, his, his uh, name is Noderbeck as well on top. Okay, yeah. Wait, is it? it I think it is. Yakubo, Noderbeck Yakuboyev. No, 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 no. That's a different one. Shamsid, this is Shamsid and Vokidov. <laughs> There's Noderbeck of Dusatorov, Noderbeck Yakuboyev, and this Shield 12 is Shamsid and Vokidov. Yeah, this is Shamsuddin, exactly. Vokita, yes. Twenty-five yeah. fifty-two. Well, he, he told no me. Joke. He told me. He told me it was Magnus Carlsen. Then I realized it was all a Shamsuddin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. But look at this Uzbek team for the future, right? As you said, Abdusaturov, uh, Sindarov, Yakuboyev, Vakidov, and Vokidov. 
Vakidov and back there's Vakidov and Vakidov. And Vakidov. Did anybody yeah. whose name is Vakidov, you know they're good. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. I mean, That's an amazing team. It's an amazing team. They're all like 15, 17, 19, and they're all rated 25. Uzbek chess and, is very, very, uh, you know, especially with Abdus Satorov already winning the World Rapid Championships. It's, you know, very, very promising. I think that this Olympiad is going to just be... Are you... Will you be attending it? I won't be attending it. No, I will not be at the Olympiad, but uh, I will be watching with Keith. Are you there? No, no, I, I'm I, I'm not going. I'm I'm going to play a tournament. Uh, I'm You're going to play? I will be playing. Not the Olympiad. Which uh, tournament? The, are you allowed to the, say? The, yeah, yeah, the US Open. I want to oh, qualify for the US, US Championship. Open. Okay, all right. And it's in California where my family is, so I can combine it with a family visit. Beautiful. So that's Good luck in, uh, with that one. two weeks. Thank you. you know, it's not FIDE rated. So it's basically unrated. Will you be playing the, um, the Goldman variation against the Karakhan? Unfortunately, people actually study that now. That's the, <laughs> that's the saddest thing about these variations. Is like, people take everything so seriously now. They do, yeah. That was a nice tactic, by the way. Let me rewind really quickly as David Anton decline, declines a draw, but Alain Pichot found a nice way to get himself out of this situation. Knight takes b5, so you yep. can't take with a knight because, because the queen hangs. And uh, after queen b5, rook takes a3. Rook defends the queen. Mm -hmm. You can't take, obviously, because you lose the queen. Queen trade happens, and material is equal. But it is still very unpleasant for white, even in this position. Absolutely. This is, uh, this is not the sort of position you want. That's why. Whoa, whoa. Mitrabo with a crazy position in his own right. And we will All keep right. an eye as David Antone tries to push that end game. But let's transition back to our top game between Mitraba and Lekwang Lim because that game has finally spiced up. What is happening here? Well, it's up a pawn. That's all I know. White is up a pawn, but he's got an awkward configuration of pieces. Somehow. It yeah. feels like there's a lot more harmony in Black's position. Um, that said... Queen b5. Ah, this Rook might be a two. two. That's a very nasty move. Rook f2 threatens Rook f1 mate. Yeah, this is this is exactly the sort of thing that I'm talking about. The, the, the white pieces are scattered. This knight on g2 is very clumsy. Yeah, knight e5 maybe. I mean, we also got a minute 45. I, I mean... Bishop d4, yeah. This is, this is the move. You protect f2 and you hit c5. Okay, and but takes I... d4, takes a2. Sorry? I mean, I can take d4 and take a2. Ah, you can take d4. I actually completely missed my <laughs> I completely... 96, but now bishop e3, and I st stabilize, no? Yeah, bishop just e3. don't take... Oh, bishop a7 is possible, I think. Oh, really? Rook a2, rook, a2, rook a5? Rook a5, yeah. Wow. Okay, but he's got a he's got to yeah. move his move his button. Now here. rook a uh, knight f four. Yeah, this is this is this is the this is the twenty four hundred way of playing this position. You can get some <laughs> get some look. Uh, get some. Whoa! Move. Oh, Whoa. there's mate. Mate, careful. Ninety two. Wait, but after ninety two, doesn't black like lose a piece? Oh, ninety one. <laughs> oh my god! But then king f one. It's not the end of the story. There's no good discovery. Yeah. What a ridiculous end game. I mean, look, it, how often do you see even these moves ever played? Knight f3 to e1, like knight f4 to e2. Oh my knight god, look at the knight. <laughs> I mean, it's it's astounding. H4. I feel like if I have this position, I just uh, I just throw up like at the board. Like I just <laughs> he's so disoriented. But it's okay. White is okay. He's unless you've got a good discovery, it's it's all right. Yeah, Mitraba has just has nine lives. He's he's really hard to bring down in this tournament. Yes. Okay, and he's not just gonna sleep. He's gonna go rook d8. Right, exactly. And before you know it, like it's gonna be white who creates problems. And that's why he played f6. 
Knight d4 is good. Knight d4 is good. This nice is move. Knight takes, bishop yeah. takes, and then rook is attacked. Yeah, no, this is a professional with love. Jeez. 140 for Leah. He's got a big time advantage, though. With just one minute to go. This is massive. This, this is a big time. Well, it's now at 30 seconds already. Um, with every sip of coffee, his time advantage keeps dwindling. He's trying to find a way to keep the, to keep the flame going, the flame of the initiative. Yeah. But the flame has been extinguished. Yeah. Is he worse? Could be worse because the A-pawn is, is loose. and Yeah. King... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd probably take white here. King F7. Okay, now we just trade, no? King G2, put the king on H3 and say, okay, no big deal. Get the exactly. heck out of there. And if king E6, we can go rook A5 minimum. Rook yeah, D8 rook is D8, almost... Rook, all, rook A8 better. is coming, oh my rook God. Rook A8 and we're better. A6, okay. Bishop D4 A6. to disturb. Rook A7 also. He is playing so well right now. Yeah, he's playing well. Bishop b6, knight a5, but then you gotta be still have to be careful. Your king is not like totally safe. Knight e1, back. G5. Uh-oh. Yes. No, he, these last few moves I've not been a fan of. Oh, there's a mate mildly. threat. There's a there's a mate threat, he stops yeah. it. G4 though. Knight d2, okay. Maybe knight d3 should... and knight f4. Knight d3. 94 or bishop e3 professional bishop takes c5 takes knight f3 three, attacking g5 five. defending g5 b4 king g2 oh hey oh, oh, I... oh no rook d7 rook d7 rook still d7. he's still okay rook d7 king i think leconte put the king on the wrong square he had to go to e5 king c5 what did he want 96 king, yeah king f3 i thought actually i thought this move Oh, what this a is move. A clever That's actually move. a phenomenal move. Yeah, this is a very clever move. Look at the clock. He's up on time. He might win this. The Kwang! Move! Jesus! 96 and, and Rook somewhere. Rook uh, D4. Clever. Okay. King, King E4. E4, King F5, and I draw! What? No, come on. We no, were robbed. No, you've got to play with the five seconds there, I think. I think you've got to play with the yeah, I bet. I wish. I just wish they'd played it out and let the, yeah. the faster man win. Oh, boo. Okay, but okay. I get it. I get it from Mitraba's perspective. I mean, he's leading the tournament. One more game still remaining. Yeah, let's have a look. Yavor Nikolov. Oh, oops. Hello. Oh, oh, you could have taken. Win six. Yeah, when you get these time scrambles, like every move, you know, there's like a win missed. Yeah. Queen d6. Move, move, pre move. Come on, move. Take it and take it. You could have drawn. <laughs> okay. Take the queen, take the pawn. White is insufficient material. Um, it, You know, you want to hear something funny? Yeah, let's so, hear it. Back when, um, uh, th this, is this is a really cute story. I was helping out at a chess camp uh, a couple months ago, total beginners, uh, but yeah. little, you know, like adorable kids. And one of them comes up to me and he's like, he says to me, I just figured out that, um, you know, if, you know, if you're losing, you can make a draw by giving away all of your pieces and then waiting until your flag drops. And then your opponent will have insufficient mating material. <laughs> and we, I was trying to convince him for five minutes that like, it's your opponent who has to give away his pieces, not you. Right. <laughs> and it was just, That's it was, cute. it was just, it was cute. If only life worked like that. Yeah. There, um, if, if only there was an undiscovered way to draw every game where you're losing. Exactly. Okay. So what so, have we got now? We've got hello. Boys on six out of seven, and, and a name we haven't spoken about, Gadir Gusenov. Oh, maybe we haven't spoken. Has he moved this tournament? Like, how does he have seven six points? I mean, he, I've just not even seen his name. I'm just curious now when he's going to make a first first move. So I'm going to stay on this game. Right. Hello. What's going on? Okay, here? this Where is, is getting serious. I mean, it, clearly he's not at his computer, but I mean, you you weren't born yesterday. You know how these tournaments work, right? There there, there isn't like a, a fifteen minute break after every round. Finally. All right. That's a big time odds. I mean, especially playing against uh, Vokidov. Yeah, that's 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 kind of crazy. Vokidov, Vokidov, Vashmi. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, anyways, we can uh, we can we can move on to, to other games. I was just curious when he would move. Well, I mean, this is a, a battle of the top two. We could stay here. Let's, okay. I mean, okay. Let's stay here. Let's stay here. And we haven't watched Gusenov yet, so I think it makes yeah. sense. I expect Bishop e three. Actually, he might go a three here. He might go a three. Let me channel. Okay, Bishop e three, a six, and I fully expect Queen f three here. This yeah, is that's what it, literally everybody plays now. If you're not if you're not a Queen f three player, you're not cool. Old uh, school. He's not. He's not cool. He's not cool. <laughs> He's uh, playing the old school is, line. Well, yeah, this is... Oh, knight of 6, f4 is, is slightly unusual, right? Normally yeah, f3, you go f3, f3, f3 there. So bishop b4. And now what? How does it go? Yeah, yeah. My theory, my knowledge of theory is a catastrophe. No, same. And I feel like the Taimanov is one of those openings where there's like a thousand different move orders and it, it's so hard to study. It's so hard to study. But bishop yeah. b4 is one up. Probably. Knight g4, I guess you go bishop g1, and it's innocuous. Yeah, I don't like knight g4 here. I suppose you could also go b5. Yeah, b5 is definitely a move here. Okay, bishop b4 on the board. Okay, bishop d3, there it Just is. Just bishop d3. Simple as that, huh? Everything's defended. Yeah. And d5 you go... You go e5. Yeah, it seems like Yakubo, uh, ugh, Rokirov. Oh my god. I mean, there's it's not my fault. There's like seven Uzbek grandmasters who are all ridiculously dangerous and all young. It is absolutely not your fault. <laughs> I mean, I would have liked for it to be my fault. I guess that would be a good yeah. thing. A3. Okay, so you go into one of these endings. I, I mean, I'm actually. Yeah, I, I, I never did well with white on the white side of these positions, somehow. Because of the pawn structure? On the, yeah, on the, the structure, side. and it's, you know, you have to play super precise, which is definitely not my forte. <laughs> yeah, um, super precise? No, 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 no. Get, get, get that out of my face. <laughs> Whoa, he took it. The, now, that's actually very interesting. He took it the pawn. I feel like Capablanca would you know, scoff at that move. But it also makes sense. He wants to keep the position open, get the e-file opened up. Yeah, I so. don't mind the move, actually. Okay. Knight c4, I guess. Bishop b4. Oh, knight c6. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of those two. You definitely don't want to take and, you know, free, no, no. free trip to the orthodontist for, for white's pawns. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, no, I've I, no, that's, I've used that one before. There you go. <laughs> that's that's nice. That's cute. Okay, castles. All right. So, is the other knight going to come to e four? Um, Maybe. Possibly. Yeah, why yes. can push the pawn up to a five? Ah, well, let's switch. I'm. I'm let's I've switch. Yeah, this no, is end game. No, get get. Uh, Okay, in Mitrava's game, which, you know, I suppose we should at least take a look at. And by the way, Mitrava is no longer in clear first. There are four right. players. This is going to be a, a crap show at the top uh, and a crap shoot in terms of who uh, gets the better tie breaks. There are four players on six, and we will look at uh, Aram Hakobian's game next. Oh, no, he's playing Mitrava. Great. How convenient. <laughs> the leaders are playing each other. And what's going on here? It looks like one of those positions where black should be okay. But uh, it's a, it might be a little bit annoying if white manages to reorganize the pieces because this B4 pawn is forever weak. Yeah, so the question, I guess, is that whether... Okay, knight h7, so that takes oh, the... But now, yes. Now I that like... That takes rookie, the foot off the gas pedal. I like rookie... Ooh, queen c2, that's... I liked, I loved. You wouldn't, you couldn't pay me to move, move the queen no, away from c4. I would c4. never have gone queen c2 there. And, and especially because now the pressure on the d4 pawn, that was actually the idea of knight h7, which queen c2 exacerbated by removing a defender off of the d4 pawn. Yeah, I would have gone like 91, uh, sorry, rook e d2. <laughs> and after knight, uh, no, but knight g5 is annoying. Uh, knight, uh, Knight e5 
Does that work? Ninety. Let's bring up the analysis board. Rookie D2, Knight yeah. G5, Knight E5. Yeah. Knight E4. Knight D7. Knight E5. Knight E6. Well, I can't go knight d2 because then you take and take. Yes, so you want to give the exchange, do you? Yeah, rook d7, pretend that I saw everything and stick my knight on c3. And then maybe back to d5. I don't know if I'll, yeah, I'll it lose might be, the knight it like might that. Be all right. yeah. In the meantime, we have a bunch of trades. This does look like it's heading toward a draw again. Yes. Although a lot can happen, as we've seen, still in shock. That Samuel Sevian game where he beat Yeah, him. yeah, yeah, he won the that game. Him. Now, he unfortunately for Sam, he did not repeat his success. He lost the seventh round. So doesn't make the most out of his opportunity. Right. Queen F6 by a rum. And I, I wouldn't trade here because that pawn on B4 used to be a weakness. Now it's a strength. Now the pawn on B3 is a weakness. So queen c5, I guess, or something of that nature. Yeah. Hmm. Queen a5, maybe. I mean, you can. <laughs> it depends. If I mean, for example, if I play, for example, queen f6, gf6, a5, I just want to... Let me just All put right. something ridiculous out there. Sure. Let's pull up our analysis board here. This is an interesting end game. a5. Rook d3, I suppose. And now I want to go like a6, let's say. How ridiculous is this? It's ridiculous. pretty ridiculous. Rook a2. But I think I understand what you're trying to do. Or rook c2, maybe first. Or, uh, but you're I not going to take my pawns in time. No, I want to engineer it in a better way, and I'm clearly failing to do it. Um, yeah, it's not after good. After rook d3, I think, yeah, you, you'd, you'd have to play rook b2 and. The eval no, bar. That's ugly. Oh, but let's also not forget that white is a past h pawn, so black's well, that, king is very much confined to the king that, side. That's exactly why I was contemplating queen six f six because I have this past h pawn always. Whoa! In the meantime, we have a very tense position. Queen c three, huh? Standoff between the queens and the rooks, and queen takes c three, rook takes c three, king f three, I guess. Whoa, black has to be careful. White is threatening to take the rook on c3. Okay, there might be a repetition. Rook e2, rook c3, rook e3. I think it's actually yeah. quite likely. And is a draw good for these guys? Unclear. Unclear. Probably not. It depends on how the other six out of seven game goes. So we'd have to check back into the uh, shield, the shield game. Right. Okay, in the shield game, we have an end game. I feel like that it's still a pretty boring end game. <laughs> Nothing has changed okay. there. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then of course we have a big peloton, a group of tons of people with five and a half out of seven. And they include a Parin, Lai Kuang Lim. God, a Parin is destroying Lai Kuang. Oof. That's a piece. Wait, wait, wait. Lawrence. Go on. Look at this. Queen C3. Yeah. What is this? What am I seeing here? You're seeing what I'm seeing. And I mean, this I think is we're... just this. I mean, Le Quang is in Beal. He's played a, he played 12 or something of 14 blitz games yesterday. I mean, he's got nine attempts to play this tournament. Right. And he was already yeah. down a pawn, so he was he was frustrated and yeah, but Queen have C3. you ever blundered a piece like in one move as a title player over the board? What about every game? Over the board, of course <laughs> I have. Have you? Okay. What about every other question. game I blunder have a piece? Ever, have you ever? Have not you seen my against Canty? I've like I gave no, 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 the guy no, 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 six no, no. pieces in classical chess. Look oh, at this, Rook D one. Rook D one. Yeah. Uh, in it, classical, I, I, I must have. Over I the board, classical. I must have. I must have. I must have. I'm too weak. <laughs> I can't give you an exact example when, but I, I for sure did. Yeah, it's never you? it's never a fun moment. I don't think I've done it as a classical. I, when I was twenty one hundred, I blundered a bishop in one move. So my opponent had a rook on g seven, and a rook yeah. on a eight, and both of the rooks were defending a pawn that was on a seven. Yeah, I played bishop takes a seven. I I didn't see the rook on g seven. So this was back in the day when people were writing their moves down before they played them. 
Um, and I'm going to turn on the shield game. So my opponent writes down Rook something takes a seven. And I'm right. like, first of all, why is he sacking an exchange? And second of all, <laughs> what do you mean Rook G takes a seven? There's only one Rook that can take on a seven. And of course, that's when I noticed that there was another Rook that could take the bishop. <laughs> and the craziest thing is that I drew that game. <laughs> I down a full piece for no comp. Ooh. G4, FG4, 96 check is the cute idea. Accompanied by the declension of a draw offer. Rejection, I guess. Oh, slightly less awkward. Ooh. This happened. And Gusainov said, okay, I can cement the bishop on f5 and I can never be worse. And he's probably right because the bishop does a phenomenal job of protecting b7, protecting f5, hitting c2. So, so much so that I would consider if I were duck duck Gusainov sacrificing on e4. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but now he's very passive. Now he's worse. Now he's worse, probably. B5, King F6. Maybe not worse, but, you know. No, I think white is worse here. But I how think... is black going to make any progress? Like, if you just play King G3 and, you know, chill. Um, can we get spicy here? Nearly. Let's. If I get my king safe, can I go BV exactly? C3 yeah, I know what you're bishop thinking. Bishop f3 in the bishop end. Bishop yeah. f3, yeah, it doesn't quite work. But. And I understand why you want to tuck your king away somewhere, because like Ricky seven in the end. Exactly. So let me tuck my king on. Uh, I'll probably mate myself, put, put my king on h4. <laughs> if I can get my king to h4 and put my pawn on h5. Oh, the way, the way rooks will tuck you in with rook d6, yeah. rook h6. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, wait. Rook d1 next. Uh -oh. King g6, rook d1. Oh, this mate. Oh my God. Analysis word, please, because we need yes. to show this line. Rook d6, king h5, checkmate. And, and if black goes the other way, king g8, th the reason this is so bad is because of the potential for a ladder mate. I think white can go here. And just like, I don't give a you know what about any other yeah, pawns. Yeah. Well, bishop d3, you've got to be a little bit careful. Uh -huh. Bishop I D3, guess it's... Rook A1, Bishop D3. No, it various ways. Yeah, I don't know why why King G3 is not the best move, but but the bottom line is that this is mating. The bottom line is that this is mating. Okay, Rook B7. Hmm. No, this is a catastrophe for Guse uh, for uh, the shield. Yeah, he just fell off. A I mean, the shield got breached. <laughs> you just fell off a cliff there with uh that's the problem when you sack an exchange the rooks are just such such dangerous pieces so this one's over so that's a big result that means that gadir gusenov whom we barely watched has crept his way up to seven out of eight again assuming he wins mitraba in the meantime is in a very sharp end game against Aram. Wow. What's happening is, here? Uh, oof. I mean, this looks like a draw to me. For some reason, I, I feel like this will be a draw. I think I would probably take white, but I'm not sure. Because let's say black plays rook b6, no? Okay. I take it. Ah, oh, you take and you get back with the king and I lose. Sorry. No, I go G. I or I. I was thinking I have at least a draw with G five. I was thinking a lot yeah, more primitively. I think we lose after rook B six takes takes king E three. Oh, that's actually super cool. And if you play F six, F six E five, E five, yeah, F G G five, and easy breakthrough. Wow, that's yeah. such an easy move to. I mean, how many people would just yeah. automatically play rook I mean, B six? You're saying for sure. And that's why I would take white here, because if there's no way to block and there's no way to actually progress here, then my next moves is white are, are fairly simple. G5. Got to be careful that after H6, there isn't some E5, E5 yeah. check. Yeah. But, that's actually uh, a very, imp very important detail. Yes. Hmm. Tough position. So King C, I guess that if you're black, you have to play King C4 and B3. Yeah. No, there's nothing better you, you can do. Okay. Do not play. Actually, this is very important. Do not play H6 after B3. Precisely yeah, after B3. because of E5 check. Now go E5. Now go E5. Okay. He, or or King, King. Now King E3, maybe black plays E5. 
I like three is probably like too cutting. passive. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Cutting and it's a it's a it's a game of tempi. I don't know if e five is correct actually, but it certainly looks very because then maybe rook a one. Ugh. Yeah, get it's, your way around. yeah, you get around. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, this, this is, this is a really, really tricky. He does go e five. It's on he the does. board. Oh, I have an idea. Rook a one. Yeah. No, you you're wanna... not quite. I was gonna try rook b seven to take these pawns, but you're not fast enough because black has king c three. Yes. Wait a minute. How does white? It's on the board. Rook a one. H six. Oh, it takes, takes rook h1, king g5, king, g5. king c3. King c3. And uh. it should be. But wait, how do you draw this with white? Maybe f4 and then king f6. What about king f6, rook takes h6, king g7? Sorry, f4 first. Rook. So f4, king c2, and then king f6. Is that ridiculous? No, no, no. That's. I think that's exactly right. He plays king f6 first. Immediately. I... Okay, but you can do the other order. Rook h6, yeah, king f7. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, king f7. f4. Two. Whoa, no, 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 no. Rook h4. Rook h4. Stops f4, and you then threaten rook b4. No, it was the worst move in the position because you wanted to keep the king on f7 so that you could take on e6. Yeah, and now the point is, it's so over. here's the question. Now you just go king c3. Now you just bring the king. Rook h6 and is, also, and now rook f3 also. Rook h3, sorry. I, I no, think rook, rook h5, rook h5. I think, or no, 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 then king f6 takes king yeah, c4. Bring the king. Four, it's still not over? King e4, it's over. It's over. It's completely over. The king it's is- It's over, it's over. You made king contact, that's around the king back. f6, yeah. king d5, yeah, yeah, yeah. King d6, rook, rook, h6. rook h6, check. Yeah, I'm rook h6, that's it. Yeah. Very nice technique there at the end. And Aram Hakobian, it manages to beat Mitraba. Tough run there for Mitraba going to the last round. And it's going to be Gusenov against Hakobian. Do you think they might take a quick draw? So, because that way they basically guarantee... Well, do they guarantee because it gets tricky? What if, like... I guess they guarantee, yeah, they guarantee. So, the weird thing about this tournament is that they guarantee... They don't. Their tie breaks are very similar right now. It's twenty two and a half to twenty one seventy five. The tie breaks. I need to remind everybody. This is very important. Tie breaks don't get updated until all of the results are in. So what you're going to be seeing on your screen, especially if they draw their last round game, isn't necessarily the actual truth. If there is a tie for first and second, the first by tie breaks goes through, and then second and third end up playing their mini match. I think they're going to play play to the death. I honestly think that. Okay. A couple more games still remaining. Yeah. Jack Rogers against Herzog. All right. Yep. They're not quite in contention, but not a bad score for either of them. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Stalemate. Come on. You got this, Jack. King e6 and rook g7. Riveting endgame. <laughs> now watch Black win this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, Black is up on time. Yeah, he, he is. He, that's the, no, that's the point. Rook G6, Rook H8. Oh, oh, no. and he oh. did that instantly too. He saw that from, he saw that from, uh, from a mile away. Okay, so that I think concludes the games from the penultimate round. Seed belts fast, and ladies and gentlemen. I am praying for anything other than like a Berlin draw. Yeah. Um, let's see. I mean, do these guys, they, they, they're not, I mean, they might just play a game of chess. I think they are. I think even move one by Gusenov is an indicator that he's at least interested in playing. Not well, Gusenov is, yeah. a, is, a, is a famous, I mean, he's part of the Azerbaijani generation which played the Benonis, the Kings Indians. I mean, of course, we all remember uh, the heartbreak, um, you know, years. Uh, when was it now, actually? 
when did Vuga pass away? It's probably... Uh, 2012, I want to say, or 13. Yeah, as long as it's 2000. It was it long, ago, ten... as long ago as that, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there are a lot of players watching this who, who won't know this name. And it's Vugar Gashimov, uh, yeah. Yeah, Vugar Gashimov, who was my generation, born uh, born my year. Actually, he's just he was a couple of months younger than me. Mm -hmm. he, no, he passed away in 2014, January, but he was he had um, was it a, a, a brain tumor, I think it was. Yeah, one of the strong and, 2760. Yeah, he got to 2760. He was like one of the absolute top players in the world. Uh, Great guy. I remember hanging out with him in uh, in Gibraltar in 2009. And um, yeah, obviously passed away very, very prematurely. Um, uh, but he was uh, a, a brilliant, I mean, he was, he basically put the Benoni back on the map sing single handedly. Topalov had a go and then, you know, Gashimov put this opening back on the map. He was such right. a brilliant player. He also, by the way, was the first guy to play e4, c5, knight, c3, d6, d4 successfully. It's been called the oh. Carlson, but he actually had some uh, some fame with that. And he was only 27 years old. It was really just unbelievably tragic. But uh, so him, and, yeah, him and Gusainov and, and a group of players of that generation carried the flag and, and they, they played the... Uh, the Kings Indians and the Benonis and, and these yeah, and, and, and by the way, Gusenov did offer a draw in this game on like move he four, did. and Aram declines it. So it is Aram Ooh. who is actually trying to squeeze something out of this end game. I don't know if he's succeeding. I mean, this looks very, very equal. Maybe a tiny little something, something for white. Yeah. Little something. The bishop, little yeah, bishop something. has to come back. Yeah. Well, I mean, the yeah. black bishop is uh, is is sort of biting on granite. Yeah. Bishop c one probably is the, the square for the bishop. So ninety five. Does that is that anything? that does exist? Yes. That does exist. Yeah, it it exists, and I think it I think it's what he's calculating right now. I think it's what he's calculating. Yeah. Hmm. Complicated position. This is very, very the game between the leaders. Both of these have seven. There yeah, will be uh, one other qualifier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a decisive result here is of uh, it wins the tournament. So a win is huge. A draw, and then a lot of things can happen. Um, we've got Oparin. You remember I, my, my, my horse, the Yospam. He's up yes, there, yeah. Danya. He is. He's, He's up six there. and a half. He's my horse. He's playing. He's playing down. So he's playing somebody who has six. Because your horse is out. Your horse. Is my up horse. Uh, yeah, yeah, ran into backing. a wooden stand. Yeah, <laughs> like some blunt object. <laughs> Rafa Medov is nowhere to be found at the top. Oh no, he's on. He's on six he's on out of six. eight. So, but he but can't it's, qualify. It's not no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Okay, All right, Rick so, D eight. What are we looking at here? This is Hrant against Opari. This is crazy. They literally faced in the last qualifier. They played in the last round. They made a draw, and then Hrant failed to qualify by tiebreaks. Oparin did qualify to play Eric Hansen, and then lost to Eric in the second third place match. Oh, I see. So Oparin is gonna is rearing to go for another chance, another crack at. Uh, a taking down whoever will be challenging him. And a draw. A draw greed in Gusenov against Hakobian. Ah, we do have a draw. Okay. Yep. So they Which will... Blows, blows the tournament wide open, by the way. Yes, because Gusenov has got 31, but we don't know the tiebreak. So, apart, I mean, Aparin, if Aparin wins, it looks like he's got a good chance with his tiebreak of just winning the thing. Jospin has got crazy. a poor tiebreak. So we'll have to check out the Yospam game as well. Yep, let's, let's take have a, look. a look. Ooh, tough pairing. He's playing Sevian. Yeah. And he's in a he's in pretty bad shape here too. Gross position for black. Big knight on d5. And okay, it's gross, but on the on the other hand, it's one of those positions that isn't lifeless. So there are different kinds of gross. And this is 
palatable grossness, um, if I can put it like that. Uh, it's cow tongue. Right. <laughs> Have you ever had cow tongue, Danya? I have not had. I'm not a tongue person. I I, I can't do tongue. Really? That's no, not what I, she just said. just the thought of it. I can't. Okay. I, I will do. I, I'm not an organ person. Like, I, I You're don't not an like. Organ. No. I, frog gras. Like, I don't liver. I, I, no. Okay. I Actually, frog gras, like, d disgusts me. Okay. So, what about? So the short answer is no. No. <laughs> well, cow tongue. I've tried and I've had two cow tongues. Okay. One was absolutely hor horrific and one was really, <laughs> really nice. And that's how I see this position here for Yospam. It's Is there such a thing as like a fil <laughs> filet mignon tongue or like a, I mean, I, I have a porterhouse tongue? I have no idea, but um, it's, it, it's, it's not great, this position for Black. Let's put it this way. He needs to find a way to re like. He needs a breakout. I mean, he can't just stand still, I don't think. But at the same time, if you try and play a move like F5, you do loosen your position. Yeah, and, and I mean, you can't really take the strain, the additional strain. This on is your where position. now you can't do it at all. Now you go H4 as white right here. This is the this is the uh, oh yeah, move. that's the classic the classic loose. technique. Yeah, this tickle is the, tickle this, the tickler the loosener. The, the fabric Very. softener. Okay, knight d5 first is fine. But maybe you can take. Because if ED, yeah, he has to go rook b. ED f5 was good. But my, uh, my worry is one of a more mundane character. Like, even if Bla Black's not winning this game, I feel like Bla Jospin has to win this. Right. For any chances. And how is Black going to. I can see Jospin well, holding this. I like Bishop H6. Yes, this. This, is, this, is, no, this is improved for Black massively. This has been a Okay. Oh, this is huge. This is huge. This, this is, huge. is huge. Because White is left with a lame Bishop. Now, White is still better, but the Knight is, is jumpy and D6 is nicely protected. And, you know, White could overpress here. Yeah, I could see that happen. Oh, there's H4. Okay, so what? G5. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we play G5. Paper Tiger. We play G5. At the earliest possibility. Such as okay, now, do it. black is better. I uh, know we have to be careful. H G F G E five. Does that exist? Is that the end of the story though? Yeah, it kind of is. So we must Rook G7 uh, first. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. And he plays it. And he's up a minute on the clock too, which is important because the position's about to heat up. It really is, but the, you know. Uh, Sam not really firing today. It's clear he's he's either tired or he's something ain't right with Sam. I think he's tired. He's tired. Yesterday was a very tense day. Losing to Wesley in the finals of the RCC. A very successful performance without yes. question. But fatigue definitely playing a role. No question about it. Mm. Daniel, are you... Uh... Yes. Are you a tea guy? I Are am you... very much a tea guy. I drink both coffee and tea. I my heart lies with because my mom's from Baku, and uh, oh, really? Azerbaijan is the is the cap tea capital of the world. Yeah. I had actually no idea. I thought, and your dad is from Russia. Uh, Kiev. Kiev. Ukraine, you're Baku. Yeah. You're a Baku Kiev. So, oh wow. Okay. Yeah, but Baku. I went to Baku in 2016 uh you know to to visit my my mom's uh you know institutions of birth and the amount of tea that is consumed in Azerbaijan but it's not just anything the tea even if you oh, hate wonderful. tea yeah the, 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 in the in the way it's served with the in the little glass and the in the silver the small glasses the small, with the silver yeah, it's like spoon turkish tea it's with like a little turkish jam, tea. like a yes. civilized person as you're sitting outside yes. watching watching you know yes uh Cars make their way down the chaotic intersections. It's amazing. What about you? Yeah, I'm definitely a tea guy. I love Turkey. I mean, you're talking about, so I love drinking tea in all of the sort of Caucasus regions. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really enjoy it. Um, I'm, I am a coffee guy, though. I do, I do have three or four cups a day. I know it's, I know it's not good, but. No, I, um, I, I'm, I'm, in that, I'm in that territory, too.
but you know when you're commentating for you know you do four hours of lessons and commentate for four hours a day you you, you gotta you gotta have something to keep your to keep your wits about you and um that's that's what i do look at this f5 now we got that Whoa. juicy square on e5 this is catastrophe for for uh what is what has he done in 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 Botvinnik Chess Academy, you would get uh, your uh, finger chopped off for giving up such square. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, look at this bishop on c2. Horrific. Yeah, what but, is, what... but the but logistically, the problem is that White's going to get a rook to h1. It's not going to be easy to actually. The like, good squares don't win games. Well, they kind of do actually. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about h5, h4? Yes, yes, h5, h4. This is your, the way. Your, your boy, your boy is making yes. str uh, unbelievable strides here. Yes. Wait because a second. Queen... Let me just. Yes. This position and this, like, how I mean, is this even a thing? I don't know, but this is beautiful. So now the point is that okay, H sixty three is illegal for the moment, but what do you do here with White? Because if you move the queen away, let's say you go queen G four. I can okay. actually consider knight e5 straight away. Queen h5, check king g7. And um, as we say, al is in ordnung. And also all, just snake. All is in order. <laughs> yeah. Or you could just snake the king round. You could snake the king round. Oh, look at this. Let's go to the live position. Why have we not been updated here? Oh, oh, oh that's my bad because I was dilly dallying around. Let's this go. Is the live position. Yeah, no, but this is, I mean, look at this. This is dream world stuff. I mean, the king has come around to C1. And Black's king is probably going to go around to B8. But I mean, for you have sure. To pass through, you have to pass through a small war zone on your way there. So it's King right. D7, okay, so you put the knight on the back first. Good stuff. Yes. Good. And, and this pawn majority is huge. Like, eventually, white, Black could even break through with H3 and G3. And look at the clock. He's up now two and a half minutes. This is a catastrophe for... Sam Sevier, and he's probably thinking, what have I done to get this? Queen F2, Rook H8, a tempo, Rook H8. And Rook G8. Rook, G1, Rook D G8. Perfect. Or you don't even need it, really. The, the pawn is defended. We can just move. King D7 or H3. Felt a little premature, H3, but okay, if you have to go G3, maybe it's okay. Yeah, now, now, now he's just got forever to, to just shuffle his pieces around. Definitely, I would get the king to be like For I would one hundred percent, hundred percent, get it out of the you know, get it out of your hair, so that you can focus on what's important in this position. Yeah, and then you've got ideas like knight c six, rook d eight, target the e four pawn, use the d four square. You know, if you're sevy and whatever you do, okay, so he's gone the other way. I don't like that. I I don't like. No, I don't like that at all. Why didn't he go to the queen side? Why is I he? I don't know. He, the, you, you don't want to mix, you know, work What is and he play. doing, like, actually? He's kind of, I don't want to say screwing it up, but he's making his task rook h7. Wow. Well, okay. he's trying to milk. I think he's trying to bleed out some of Sam Sevian's clock. You, a, a draw would be a disaster here for Jasper. So he, he knows no. that. He, he Surely he knows that. Of course he knows that. King e7 because is correct. Because we already have two players with seven and a half. Okay, king d8. King d8. Yeah. King d8, put the king on c7, and then we start again. And then we can go knight c6. We can put a knight on d4. We can put a knight on b4, uh, depending on whether, of course, if we don't, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, king c7. Okay, We're not so afraid of b4. We're not afraid. No, of no, no. To the contrary, you would love for the b file to, yes. I mean, you would love for nothing more than for the b file to open. Okay, but so. Jasper needs to move faster. King a2, okay. king b8. A5. A5 is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Queen okay, now knight c6, you tease. Do you? Rook g8, even better. You do okay. need to eventually get the knight somewhere, like because otherwise, maybe a4. Maybe a4. Yeah, but ba4. Or b4. I like ba4 there. That's the only problem, I think. Maybe not. Again, I would probably go king b8, like king a8, but not then easy. the d6 pawn becomes quite tender. Hmm. Not what easy. I, yeah, no, this is, this. of course, you've improved, and now you need, you need the next level of improvement, and I don't, I don't see it. Maybe so we actually, 
do go H2, is it is it at all reasonable to to uh, what about H2? Is this reasonable this move? And then you want to double on the H file. We're we about no, to no, I don't. I want to go knight. It. I want to go knight c6. Okay, or rook h7. You don't want to give that pawn away. No, but I want to. I want to. I want to do it with knight c6. And I, I. Oh, he wants to do it like this. Okay, that's also reasonable. That move Ooh, I really like. Take take g3. Take, take, g3. take g3. Oh my god, rook d3. Knight, rook g2. Knight d3. It's winning. Yeah. No. This Holy is smokes. Sam Savio with a huge blunder. Takes takes g3. You saw that instantly. Jospin sees it for sure. He's thinking. Wow, this just fell in his lap. Wow. He's done it. Finito. He's... Finita la comedia. It's over. It's and Jospin is going to move to 7.5 out of 9. And it's all going to come down to Oparin against Hrant. Because they are the only other players who can reach seven and a half points. I've been keeping an eye on their game as we've been analyzing this one. Yeah. And it looks like Gregorio Parin is on the cusp of winning the game. I don't know which game to turn to. Let's just wait a couple moves to make sure Jospin knows the technique. But I don't think he's going to sweat the technique. All right. Yeah. yeah. What does he do, actually? Is e5 is coming. <laughs> Can you believe Actually, it? what? White still has chances. Can this e5? be like a queen? Okay. Uh, no panic. No panic. How do we not panic? <laughs> no panic. <laughs> I mean, e6, e7. Well, queen e3. Queen e3. Queen e6, e3. Queen e3. e6, king e8. Yes. Resigns. You're going to lose the bishop. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, and Oparin blundered. is blundered. blundered. And Jasmine blundered. What does he do? Why did he give the rook up? Oh my this. god, this is ridiculous. H d7 and rook takes h2. Yeah, and you've got some kind of weird fortress or what? And is white is white winning? Wow. No. How do you not play queen e3? Queen e3 resigns there. Yes. Bishop d5 first. It's a fortress. It's gonna be a draw. And Oparin's game might be a draw. Oh my god, somebody with seven points might actually qualify. No, Hrant's going to win. Hrant's going to win? Hrant's going to win. He was losing completely, and Oparin blundered again. And for oh the second, goodness. or maybe it's a draw. This is the position in their game. King h4. Walk. No, oh, this my is God. I don't know which game to display, because both of them are so close. I think Hrant is just completely winning. Okay, he's winning... This is not even close, is what you're saying. Just take and king g5, king f5. Take okay, yeah, and then yeah. you will, yeah. R rook h4 also wins. King f5. Yeah, okay. So this is over. Yes. Now this, this is one? the big game. No, we stay here because there's still some, for example, a4 in some, like rook d5, cd5, a4 to try. Yeah, you, need to, you need to open up white's king. But black could lose this. I mean, rook h, rook h8 is, is a huge threat. Yes. I would it take actually wins. Here. I would take the bishop here. Jospin needs to make a draw here, and that's that's a disaster. I would take the bishop. You give some checks. Well, it's a perpetual. Uh, I mean, what black is a perpetual here. But you, oh, he does go for the a4 trick. Wow, I love it. Rook b8. Okay, king e7 forced. It's still king a draw. King c8, rook h8, rook d8. Black's winning again. Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. Queen d2. No, no. <laughs> he had queen d2 and a b. Oh my, oh my god. god, I need now to show that that was the sickest win I've ever seen. Show that win. He could have left. Wait, but let's see this time scramble. Okay, King oh, C3. Queen D1, he's trying. Queen, Queen, Queen C1. Queen C1. Queen C1. Yeah, King C2. Right. Oh, but this is easy to pre move. Mine's foot. Oof. Oh. 8, 10. Oh no! Oh, Queen C3. Oh, oh, King C2. King C2. Rook D2. Oh, Jocelyn's going to lose. Look at how Ooh. fast Sevian or rook b3. Oh, yeah, it's over. It's over. Oh, my lands. Oh, my lands. Unbelievable. And that is the worst possible result. And Harant Melkumian wins the game and defeats Gregorio Parn and qualifies to play. To play who? To play Gadir Gusenov, who's got second by tiebreaks. I need to show this window, Lawrence. Yeah, if we rewind, us. this is unbelievable. 
if, if I have this correct, I'm just going to check with the engine, of course. So this position after rook takes d7, you have a check. Yeah, yeah. King b1. Look at this position. A takes b3. <laughs> that is correct. Because bishop b7, you drop the rook. Yes. The rook is hanging. You can't stop mate. Wow. Imagine if Jasmine had qualified with a win. He's not going to be sleeping tonight. He's not going to be sleeping tonight. Oh my God. What a crazy finale. But the upshot, ladies and gentlemen, are yes. three players. Aram Hakobian, he qualifies by tiebreak. He's in first. Gadir Gusenov and Haram El Kumian to play a two game mini match. But first, a break. We need to catch our breath and we need to let Haram and Gadir Gusenov prepare themselves mentally for what is to come. There is one more spot. Who will take it? We will find out. You're watching the chess.com global championship back with Gusenov against Ramo Kumian on the other side of this short break.
and we welcome you back to the chess.com global championship play in qualifier number five jam daniel naritsky alongside i am lawrence trent bringing you the coverage the main tournament has ended aram hakobian has qualified and now it is up to gadir gusenov and hrant malkumian to fight it out to the death to figure out which of the two players secures the second qualifying spot the format is very simple two games of 10 plus zero the winner qualifies to the knockout phase in the event of a 1-1 tie, either two draws or one win for either side. A single 10 plus 0 game. Armageddon decides the match with the player bidding the lowest, getting the black pieces with the amount of time that they bid. Lawrence, we couldn't ask for a better finale to this uh, already nerve-wracking, topsy-turvy epic day. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been full of drama and full of... Uh... Uh, you know the sort of the sort of chess we like to see, fighting chess and interesting chess. And now, these two very experienced grandmasters. I mean, these two have been around the block, to put it mildly. They've played for their country. They've won uh, you know, a number of important tournaments. Uh, they've both been stable twenty six fifty to twenty seven hundred grandmasters for. I would say a forever. decade, actually. Forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, forever. Just both of them are just experienced, uh, well-qualified GMs. And uh, I don't know really who is favorite here. It's, it feels like a total coin flip to me, this, uh, this match. 100%. Compl honestly, just I could see either player winning. Gusenov is a... I mean, his level of experience in Blitz cannot be overstated. He's been terrorizing the various chess sites for probably closer to two decades, and they are off with a Karokan in the first game. And this Knight F6 variation is all the rage. Everybody play is playing it now. Everybody. Yeah, it, it really is. And uh, I had to look at it myself um, to start mm -hmm. playing the Karokan. And, oh, Knight A6 early. This that is one I've never early. seen before. Yeah, this is slightly unusual, but maybe it's okay. I mean, castle short is the main move there. Kron well, starts by getting his knight around. I'm not sure actually. What why tends to play, play a, a queen a very early queen c two actually? Uh, yep. I didn't like. Yeah, I'm I'm not in love with what white is doing. It's okay, of course, queen d two and you can't. Well, stand up on. offering a draw. Really? And Melkumian says what? thank you, thank you very much. I'm happy to take this draw and. Uh, get the white pieces in the second game what's going on here i mean and what you can this? see that the bemusement on hrant's face like he's like uh really did this just happen gusenov just sorry i'm i'm confused who offered the draw gusenov gusenov offered the draw and i'm, I'm perplexed could he be trying to get this into the armageddon because for whatever reason he is good at Armageddon. Well, first of all, the problem with that is that Haran Mokumian is not going to give him a draw with the white pieces. What was that? How do you explain that? I am a bit in shock because to give up the white advantage like that so quickly, I just don't get it. Unless they're just going to agree another draw and play an Armageddon and say, may the best man win. Um, Totally bizarre. No idea. Don't understand. Knowing Ryan, I mean, he's helped out Levon Aronian before. The guy has, you know, the guy packs a punch with the white pieces. So, I mean, he. I don't think he's going to do the same thing with white that Gusenov just did. Well, I would be shocked. I'm, yeah. I, I still, I still, I still don't really understand what's going on. Because the I, position I is more than playable for white. There's enough imbalance. But I mean, you know, Bishop F4 was weird. Like, normally in these positions, you at least try to keep some pieces on the board. I mean, normally normally you castle and play knight g3 and queen c2 and all the, all you know, all the cross, cross your t's and dot your i's. <laughs> dot your i's and cross your t's. Anyways, that's, a, that's behind right. us now. The first game is a draw, and we've got one more game. Let's see how it unfolds. And Gusenov is a noted King's Indian player, sticking to his guns here at the start with the Samish variation as what Haran has played against me. He is very, very dangerous in the Samish. A6, Bishop B3, Knight C6 probably. 
Knight uh, G3. Three. Okay, that's possible. But it's more rare than bishop e3. Yes. Knight c6. Okay. Exploiting the drawback, by the way, of knight g3, which is that the d4 square has become quite tender. And black can play e5 and knight d4. Oh, absolutely. You can play like this. I'm not sure I like knight g3, actually. No, knight g3. Oh, no, no, this is ridiculous. To go back to e2, well, this can't be right. I mean, if, if he can get the knights off the board, now I think he's... He's all right. Yeah. Knight, H, Knight H5. Knight H5. Yes. Gusenov Is offering it? a draw. Perant declines it immediately. Oh! <laughs> very, very. Can you go Knight F4? It's unnecessary. F5 is, of course, principal. And oh, Castle's wait, long, wait. but now you can White's go F4. better. But no, but now you can go F4. But I don't like the f4, bishop f2, and I prepare c5. Like, I go king b1, rook c1, and then I, I just shove, okay. shove c5 through. Okay. Agreed. So, Knight f4. Bishop back to f1. Yeah, the problem is black wants to play b5, but it always gets met by c5. It's very irritating. Yes, it is. I mean, you could even take on b5 twice. Wait, so what does he want after c5? Well, B B four maybe. Yeah, some. But but, I but I'm not actually sold that Black has anything significant after C B A B Bishop B five. I think it's a bluff. You think it's a bluff? It could be. Actually. I think it's a bluff. Yeah. In fact, I'm quite sure of it, and so is Harmel Kumian. I mean, just go King B one. Yeah, there are some open files, but Black doesn't have the mach the machinery to make anything of them. This is bad, bad play by Gusenov, I think. Wow. Yeah, what does he do? <laughs> Agreed. Bishop d7, maybe. Yeah, bishop d7 feels like the move. I mean, but if we pull up an analysis board here for a second, let's say bishop d7. Okay, white takes it, right? White goes king b1. Yes. And my, my desired setup is rook c1, rook c2. Okay. Like, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. Okay, I'll play the obvious rook b8. By the way, we should transition to the position on the board because we have something very cool. similar. Well, we he have played... something, maybe an even slightly better version for black. Yeah, so he's found a way to optimize the placement of his heavy pieces, and he's obviously bringing the rook to b8 on the next move. But here comes rook c1, so we, we managed to approximately predict how the game is going to go. Yeah, and the problem is after rook b8, rook c2, there's no clear way for black to improve. And, like, if white wants, he could play g3. It's, I'm not saying he should do it now, but he can play it at some point just to get rid of this pesky knight. You might... Okay, rook b4. Good move. Okay. Just trying to whip up whip up some manner of compensation, something interesting here. And Hrant continues to improve his position and tighten the screws. The screws are being tightened. And yeah, they're already pretty damn tight. I mean, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they're already, <laughs> it's been a long day. It has. Um, I mean, it's been a long day for you. It's 10 in the morning, mate. You know, welcome yeah, to my world. Yeah. It's only, yeah, it's 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 only like 11.40. This is when I've I wake up a, sometimes. I've had a nice run in the morning. I've gone to the gym, taught a bit of chess, bought groceries, cleaned the house. Wow. I need to do all of those things, but I'm probably going to play the next. I'm probably going to play the next. Uh, Are you going to play it? Yeah, I'll probably play it. Okay. Yeah. When is it? It's like immediately after. It's right? in an hour and a half. I still need to get verified, though. But, You're not uh, verified? I'm not verified yet. I've been procrastinating on that. I mean, the fifteen dollars, you know, it's quite a lot. You got to pay fifteen bucks to get verified. I think so. Yeah. But I, I actually, but I advocated for that. This is the funny thing because Chess.com treats, you know, everybody's equal in the under the eyes of the law, you know, and under the yeah, eyes of Chess.com. I'm I'm gonna pay them in Turkish lira. 
<laughs> in, maybe in, in Greek drachma, <laughs> the old currency. That's it. Okay, in the meantime, Gusenov is... Yeah, I mean, a, he's stumped. It's not easy, right, basically? Oh, he's stumped because there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. But what is White's next move going to be? That's, I guess, an interesting question. Well, G3 exists. Um, okay, I would actually maybe voluntarily, like, proactively go Knight H5, Knight F6. Yes. Yes, I think I would play this move as well. I really yeah. don't yeah. see anything else for Black here. It's like when your mom proposes something, and you know it's a good idea, but, you know, you're only going to do it if if it's your idea. Like, I want to go to F6, but I don't want you to make me go to F6. Right. <laughs> go to F6 yeah. on my own. <laughs> Hmm. Finally, and Fine. guess what? <laughs> we kings, us kings, Indian players. You know, we we stick together. We think similarly. Okay. I feel like kings, Indian players do have a weird bond. Yes, you know, it's this, it's this mutual suffering. You know, it's the more degenerate spectrum of the uh, of the. Uh, the, the, the degenerate side of the chess spectrum. Can confirm. Because, well, Vladimir Kramnik told me years ago the King's Indian loses by force, and I I kind of tend to trust him. Um, right. You know, we, we give White the center, we give White space, and we pray that we get lucky with F5 or some some B5. That, that's, the, that's the essence of it. So there's a slight bit of degeneracy to playing the King's Indian. Now, G4. whoa, G4, whoa! Now, wait, wait, wait what? It. Knight F6? I don't love it. Knight F6, E4 is weak. You have to go Queen wait, G2. Now, wait a minute. After Queen G2, is there not already a sacrifice on G4? What, what? do branches do? Like, analysis board. Queen G2, Knight E4. Knight E4, Rook A2. White oh, can A2. resign. I mean, you're mating. Oh, my God goodness. Sake. What are we watching? No, this, is a, this is a horrible move, G4. Check rook takes b2. I mean, the position plays itself. Totally, you know? yeah. You're, you're making a you know donor kebab out of black, white's king. Catastrophe. Total, but this g4. I mean, the way people play chess now, it's absolutely. I cannot watch this. This, this is ridiculous. Yeah. No, it was Brad, right. just had a no, actually, no, but it's just a generic, like, I disgusted. Was just a a Retired old 26, 26, 70, yeah. <laughs> I got it. Boris Vasilevsky. I got you. No, what was... She, I mean, how do you explain this? What is I mean, G4? Tiredness. I don't really have an explanation for it. It's, it's such a poor move. Really, really shocking. I like how chat... I mentioned the drama. But Chad is trying to correct me and say it's the euro. Like, <laughs> but that was the whole point. <laughs> I know, I know, it's, I know what the currency is in Greece. <laughs> but look at this black with a with a big chart. H. Wow. Ninety four yeah. and rook a two. Any? Oh no, 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 but the. Oh my god! But then there's me. Because the the the, the knight on e four blocks the, the the escape squares, right? Oh my so lands, that. and you get a crazy position. Ninety four, ninety four, rook a two. Yes. If queen before, then you get checkmated anyway. Beautiful. And if you move the rook? Like, try to evaluate this position. <laughs> I'm sure it's rook a drop, a. probably. Rook a1, king c2. You have a cute draw, maybe queen a4, queen a6, I don't know. Or maybe some rook b... So queen a6, rook c4 might just win. Yeah, sorry, rook c4 wins. So. so for that reason, I think you should play queen b5 in order to have ah. the d5 pawn to capture. Or or maybe rook takes e4. I don't know. But let's wait Let's wait and see because this position is quite likely to arise on the board. h3 is on the board. h3 is on the board. So Hran is just sort of waiting for knight takes e4 to happen. Hmm. Is there anything else the black can do? I don't think so. I don't think so. Hmm. Knight e4 is basically forced, and with every ticking second, 
he's digging himself into a hole as Gusenov because that position that results, you need all the time in the world to navigate it correctly. There it is. There we go. <laughs> Seatbelts fastened. Here Rook we go. C7. We knew this was right. coming. So, is there any value, firstly, to thinking about Queen A4 straight up? I ju I'm just afraid Black gets mated first. Rook C8 check and Rook takes F8. Uh, yes. Yes. And Queen F2, and I mean. Yes, yes, yes. This is mate. Okay. So Rook A1, King C2, Queen A4, King D3, Queen D5. Right. That might just be a draw. Yeah, and let's pull this up once again on, on our analysis board. King D3. No, but apparently the engine seems to believe that Queen B5 is very, very bad due to Rook C4 anyway. Oh, and after Queen D5, the king somehow steps back and the queen is hanging. So, like, you, you yeah. can't take on C4. Okay. You can't take on C4. And, okay, this is all happening. This is all happening. Rook C1 is on, Rook A1 is on the board. Can you, you could also say Rook takes E4 here? Yeah, I, I started to ridiculous? wonder the same thing. I, or Not take, at all. He, he's doing it. Or take this way. Yeah, exactly. Because there's a queen takes D5. There was a cute idea of like, let's say queen takes C1 here, just mm -hmm. to show. Sure, um, sure. Rook takes E4. Looks like it's... And then you want to play brilliantly with King D3, hitting the rook and threatening Rook C8 check, but runs into queen takes d5 and you only lose. move actually without this without yeah. this this would have worked perfectly yeah okay this is is this what we've got on the board yes uh oh don't go king d3 king b1 king b1 is probably more prudent right but still queen takes d5 and white could absolutely lose this this is a total three result game but then check and check and you're not worried uh rook c8 check oh i'm worried I, I was going to run e H6. Well, I was going to go to king f7, queen f1, king e6. No, I want to go uh, queen c7 check after king oh. f7. King e6, okay. rook e8, king f6. No, but then, then I'll go king f6. <laughs> then, but then I have uh, after what? Yeah. After queen c7 check. Yep, and king b1 is on the board, so we again might see all of this. Well, then there's queen d8 check. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to get mated. Yeah, it's mate. Okay. So the, okay, threat, so the threat is rook c8. Okay. And here we go. He, he did it. Okay. What, why isn't it looks like mate rook c8? Oh, rook c8, bishop f8. Bishop h6. Okay. Queen so we bring up check. Yes. And it's a draw. Why is it a draw? It's a draw rook, because of queen c2. Rook, rook e1. I do. King a2, queen a6. Oh, king b3, queen b5. Oh, we're going, we're going to, we're God. going to, arm, we're going to Armageddon, guys. I think it will happen as well. It's gonna happen. It's definitely it's all gonna logical. happen. logical. Because white has nothing else to do. I mean, rook c8 check. What else are you doing? You're down a pawn, and what black's threatening queen d3. But this was a huge missed opportunity for Mokumian. Like he was just, it was just like over and then self-destruction with with g4 wow yeah the king's indian always survives you're yeah. always lost and then somehow something always happens <laughs> you get rewarded yeah. incredible mm. okay so why i mean why just got four minutes so we, we really are going to see this most yeah likely. we've got we've got time to chill here as ron Melkumian. Well, no, never mind. He plays rook c8, and bishop f8 is on the board. And this draw is going to be reached. Yes. Because there really is nothing else. You can't take on f8. You don't have enough pieces. Yeah. Queen, I mean, f, queen f1, queen f7 is easy to rule out. Yeah. Only move, by the way. <laughs> if not for queen f7, queen, queen f1, f1 is actually move. blunder blunderable. What? Queen takes. I guess this is also perpetual. Queen, I, I oh, saw this really? idea. Queen... I think it is, yeah. Wait, can black black can also get checkmated here? <clears throat> no, it's it's easy, I think. King e7, queen c7, and then just queen c8. Okay, this is also this is also Yeah, a draw. this is a draw. Okay, so the way that the Armageddon He's works. He's shaking his head. Why is he, why is he upset? Why is why I'm why looking is at no... them? 
Franz is upset. He's. I think he's a, he's just upset because he didn't win. I mean, he, oh, he's he upset he that he has winning. to play this armor again. Yeah, or I don't think he thinks he's losing. Don't go king f6 though, because then queen g7, queen g8 wins the queen. Oof. <laughs> but wait, you can still uh, screw this up, no? Like king e6, does it screw it up? No. Queen, queen c8 check. King e7, that's a draw. Because bishop, bishop g5, g5 king f7. Queen d7. King g8, I mean, <laughs> barely holding queen on. Queen e8. It. King g7. Queen e7. King g8. Uh, I, offer, I wanted I you to go draw. queen f7, but it's we, still we can do this. Game. We can do this all on an analysis board, folks, but we're going to see it all in the real game anyway, so there's no need for us to make the moves twice. Okay, it's just a draw. Yeah. Bishop g5, king f7, queen d7. Harant is thinking about it, but he won't go for it. Wait, there's no increment here. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's got 20 seconds. Wait yeah. a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got to play for a win here as... as, as well, well, no, but you can't because because that's 20 seconds. I mean, black's mating white if you don't go for the draw. But mm -hmm. Gusenov seemed to forget for a second that there was no increment. Wow. Oh my God. That would be shocking. Now, you could try. You could play queen c7 and queen c2. And oh like Bishop C1. Gusein have so total good. but Gusein is a great bullet player. He's gonna win this. And then Harat would never forgive himself. He'd be like, what was no. I thinking? That's okay, too Harat. dirty. He's tempted. He's trying, he's trying to extend the checks as long as he possibly can. Yeah. But it's gonna be a repetition. And Gusenov offers a draw. And Harat declines it. And it's gonna be a three time. And he offers another draw. Can Hussein you play like, Bishop F6 check and it's still a draw? No. Hran is testing exactly that. Now, Queen D7, I think, is a three-time repetition. So he's trying to figure out a way to keep checking him without repeating moves. It's not happening. He's got to take a draw. He's going to lose. If he does anything stupid, he's going to lose. And I feel like he might. He might play bishop h6 because he might not be able to resist the temptation. Yeah, it's very tempting. The guy's got 13 seconds. I'm telling you, he'll lose that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's Don't do it, Rant. Rant. Take draw. Play Armageddon. Don't do it, Rant. He's probably checking the moves to see if it's three time. And it's and it is, and it is. And uh, all right, that okay. will mean then that we have a single 10 plus zero rapid game. So how does it work actually, Danya? Okay, so here's how it works. Both players bid a certain amount of minutes. Let's say prop, you bid the amount of minutes you would be willing to accept uh, for playing black. So let's say Hrant bids eight minutes and Gadir Gusenov bids seven minutes. What happens then is Gadir Gusenov gets the black pieces. The person who bids less time gets the black pieces with that amount of time. So if Gusenov bids seven minutes, then he gets black with seven minutes and white, uh, Hrant gets white with 10 minutes. So white has 10 minutes regardless. And the person who bids lower gets the black pieces with that lower bid. So the so it could be 10 minutes against six minutes. Or against one minute if you... Like, the philosophy is, who wants the black pieces more? Because in Armageddon, I think it's commonly assumed that black has... You know, the, the power of draw odds outweighs the power of an extra minute. So you compromise by giving somebody a chance to essentially guarantee that they have black, but they would have to accept a big-time deficit. But, I mean, 10 against 6 is really a huge deficit, right? I mean... You would never bid six. I think seven. The lowest seven. I would bid is seven. Yeah, I think seven. I think generally one of the players usually bids seven. Yes. Okay, that makes. And this is fun. Let's we're gonna we're gonna have in, the inside scoop for you on what the players bid. They're bidding right now. They're bidding right now. What do you prefer for an Armageddon, white or black? I've never actually been in white one. White or extra time? I've never <laughs> I've been, been in once. one. I've never been in one, so I actually don't know. 
I think because my openings are equally as disgusting, I would take black. Um, <laughs> uh, being white is not like I have a huge advantage. I think I would take black. So just the, the additional, the draw odds. Um, so yeah. yeah, there's gonna be some vicious flagging involved here, especially if you're, if you're playing white, you're in a must win scenario. I, my favorite situations arise when the position is objectively drawn, but white needs to win. So he's like doing the craziest stuff to, to try to keep chances alive. Correct. What if both bid the same amount? Yeah, it's that's just, a good question. That's a good question. I, I don't know if there is a like a procedure set in stone. Um, you could do a coin flip then. You could do a coin flip. I like coin flips. I lose them. Yeah, they're fair. Oh my god! They both bid eight! They bid so the same what? amount! So now oh what? my god, it happened! I've never seen that before. So it, now what? Rebid. <laughs> they have to rebid? <laughs> they have to rebid. We could be here all day. We did. Now they're both gonna bid seven. Or no, okay, one of them's gonna bid eight thirty and You can bid is, decimals. I think you can bid de well. You can bid like seconds, yeah. Well, Pay I would bid eight. You know, if I was clever, I would bid eight thirty-two. I feel like they're gonna start doing this thing where one of them is gonna bid eight oh one, and the other is gonna bid like eight oh one two. Let's see. Yeah, so we're getting the inside scoop on what the players are doing right now. Hrant is. Visiting, visiting the toilet, and uh, Gadir Gusanov is contemplating his oh, that's, new choice. Oh, yeah, that is Gadir. Sorry, Gadir is Gadir is sitting, sitting down. He's like he looks like a Gadir in the headlights. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so we have an Armageddon game. We want to remind you, as the players consider their bids, what is at stake here? There's prizes for the actual play-in. They're nice. They're nothing to sneeze at, but there's quite a few more zeros, Lawrence, in the actual knockout prize fund. Just by a couple zeros. Just by a couple zeros, yeah. I mean, look at this prize fund. I've been commentating yeah, yeah. chess tournaments for well over a decade, and I've never seen $200,000 as a first prize for an Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Fund. Okay, so we have, we have news. Yes. We have the time control set. It will be Hrant with the black pieces. And it appears that he has seven and a half minutes. So kind of like what we we can trace the players' logic. Uh, that's a big time advantage. That's two and a half minutes. I think that's fair. I yes. think that's going to be fair. It's going to be close. And it's going to be an Armageddon once again, if you're just joining us. If black draws the game, then black wins. Black gets draws. And this is to determine the second qualifier into the knockout. The first qualifier is already set, and that's Aram Hakobian who wins this tournament by tiebreaks. And here we go. And they need to set the set the clock. There we go. Okay, no quick draw this time for nope. Gadir Gusenov with the white pieces. You need to win. And oh, this line. Trendy knight f3. Okay. Interesting choice. I mean, he allows black to get into an endgame, which Hunt doesn't do. Yeah, b5, bishop g7, d4, and then f usually black plays an early f6 here. Bishop g4. Apparently, this is the Briar variation. I, I thought Briar was only in the Ray Lopez. Yeah. But this is kind of a clever move order by white, right? Because you you manage to stabilize, keep the keep the keep the sense of get a knight on f3. And your claim is you have the two bishops and like your claim is really that this c5 stuff never really works yet that you can take it exactly but maybe yeah you, it's okay yeah i think black, black is very solid i mean you have like a french structure without the bishop so as cramped as black is and these dark scores are weak but you know especially if you play f6 and get activity you're, you're doing okay and gusenov decides to change the structure by taking on c5 now okay knight takes c5 okay I'm not totally. I'm not too impressed with White's position, though. Yeah, or maybe no, not. I'm not impressed at all, actually. Yeah. 
I mean, no, I, I, yeah. Certainly not critical the way White played it. Hmm. Queen a4 check. I guess trying to force the knight onto c6. You could also queen queen d7 is a move. It does not blunder the queen because bishop e5 can be wants, met with knight c6. Knight c6, bishop h6. That's his idea. To prevent bishop h6 or pass. bishop a6. Bishop h6. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny that both moves yeah. are possible. I would think it's bishop h6, hoping for queen h4. And I literally it. was opening my mouth to say, "What if queen h4?" And then, I, and then I realized it blunders the queen. You see, even Danya Naroditsky, Blitz King, <laughs> Bullet God, can blunder to oh. the very simple. Very I like much Bishop so. H6 here because it's kind of in... But the problem is, what do you do against Queen E7? Yeah, but there at least is. you're stopping Black from castling. Now Black can even castle here. Yeah. Or, or you could play Queen C7... Protect, protect the knight. I think that's more up Haran's alley. A move like queen c7. Oh, and then bishop h6, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he wants. He wanted to uh, make the black pieces a little bit more passive before playing bishop h6. It's quite clever, actually. He has preserved his two-minute time advantage, and black does end up castling, sacrificing the pawn. I like that decision a lot. Because in return for the pawn, you're going to get massive development. This bishop's a monster. Your center's great. Ugh. Usainov is not... Hasn't gotten the kind of position you want in an Armageddon game. Or any game. <laughs> yeah. And he decides not to take the pawn and just castle. Okay. Queen c7. Yeah. Supporting the, supporting the knight. Now I expect... A, a rather sad move like well i was going to say bishop e3 bishop d2 actually i was thinking to be able to play b4 at the right moment but <clears throat> this yep. is probably yep. okay rook fd8 rook fd1 all very it's interesting stuff. he goes with the f rook i guess i guess what he's saying is he wants like the a rook on b1 or on c1 he feels right. like the action the party is going to happen on the queen side yes okay position is probably about equal it's nothing has been decided yet. Bishop back to g7, maybe vacating the e5 square for the knight. Bishop back to f1. Yeah, now white can consider playing b4 at the right moment. Maybe Which now. Is, I think what black's last move was aimed against, but you can still play b4, yeah. And maybe now you, you try and maneuver queen b3, a4, and get the guys going. Not clear exactly what else you're supposed to do here. But d4, if it, I was about to say, if this exists, you can certainly think about it. Takes, takes, and you take with the knight, I assume. Here. No. Yeah, every piece, every piece that's traded is like another dagger to, to White's chances. I like bishop takes d4, because I feel like the knight, good. Yes. the knight, and he, he's thinking about taking with a rook and just trying to get everything off the board. But I would, I would play knight takes d4, and then, okay, e5 is not without its... Uh, flaws. It, it does weaken this diagonal, but this knight is a monster. And he does play e5. Yes. Ooh. Five minutes oh. from Lukumian. Yeah, let's be one. A5, lovely move. He's just going to take and go b6 and, and, and just frick, just, just, just trade everything. Trade yeah, just, absolutely just, everything. Disintegrate the white queen side. Beautiful stuff. By... France. And he yeah. played this instantly. Like he just, you yes. can just sense the psychological edges on his side. He senses that he's really, really close to just eliminating White's winning chances. Okay. okay. Rook C1 feels wrong. E4? Does it exist? But why Is not it? AB? I don't understand. Oh, AB, I mean, like, yeah. Queen E7. Yeah. Why touch the. Yeah, e4 what is about this? Hold on, good. what about this? e4, mm -hmm. rook d1. Mm -hmm. It might not be the right move. There e3 might be knight f3 or e something? Yes. <laughs> we actually th kind of think alike, I think. We do. You just think much. It doesn't work because there's some bishop g2 at the end. Right, right, not, right. <laughs> if, there was like a, if there was a rook on f1 or like a third rook yeah. on f1, it would work. 
<laughs> that is not a <laughs> defensive move. Knight c6. Remember, black only needs a draw, so yes. you don't have to go insane. But also, there is no increment, so 424, that's a lot of time, a lot. But he's going to have to keep a very close eye on the clock because Husseinov is going to try everything he can, including the most vicious type of flagging, to win this game on demand. I'd like Back to see to that, a bit of dirty flagging, Danya. Well, we will see. What, what, if Gusenov is, well, is not winning on the board, he will, you know, that's my favorite part, as I said before, like just uh, finding every last chance. So for now, Hrant, very stable, very solid, that knight on d4, and white saddled with a pawn weakness on c5. Yeah, the position is gross for white. This is not what you want. You need to try and find a way to... Okay, maybe he's going to... What can you do? Bishop d3, is that a move? a4, okay. Just a neutral so, move. Rook c5, rook b7 is, is obviously yeah. his intention, and he wants to preemptively, preemptively push that past, prospective passer up the board. Okay, now I would probably play bishop d3 as white. Well. And yeah, maybe yeah. put maybe just put the bishop on e4 in some positions. Just a tickle. Just or bishop c4, tickle. but it looks bishop c4 immediately is possible. But it runs into rook takes c5, and I yeah, feel rook like your bishop's gonna be in trouble. Oh, ah, and you, uh, coming. sorry. And then rook c7, and we we yeah, we could put the queen on a2. It's not the end of days, but okay, rook. Okay, here we go. Okay. Takes, 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 takes. Rook b7. But this Queen is... Queen g5. Oh, so for okay. on, but, but look at all these threats. Rook c1, knight f3. Yes. I mean, this is out of control, actually. Yes. You need a really good move here as white. <laughs> yeah, you need a showstopper, you know. Because the threat of perpetual... I mean, like, black doesn't even need to checkmate white again and again. The power of the draws... What Tough is position. Queen, queen, queen A2, maybe? Queen A2. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I really like it, Daniel. It's a bit of a whimper, you know, whimpery move, but at least you're creating a threat. And you're supporting the Apon. Okay. Yeah, played. Well done. Yeah, and Queen also, queen, now Bishop C... Ah, uh, no, Bishop C4, Knight F3 check. I'm blunt. Or Rook takes C4, excuse me, and Knight F3 check is... Oh. Problem. oh, oh, that's just nasty and cruel yeah. and evil. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the time advantage down to thirty seconds. So time okay. is not going to be a factor in this game. It's going to be it's going to be up to what happens. Oh, try G three. G three. One thing I wanted to point out. Oh, G three. Oh. Can no, you? I think he should play G three. I was just going to really quickly show if he just pushes this pawn. There's rook takes F one and queen C one checkmate. Like that's a that's huge problem. Which is why I agree with you. I think you should try G three. Hmm. <laughs> time situation is equal now for the first time. Gusain of down on the clock. What does he do? G3. I think that's the only move. Only I mean, way to what keep else are you alive. supposed to do here? G3 and Bishop have... G2. Try something like that. Yeah, you have to try and reorganize a bit on the king side. That's completely unclear. Searching, searching, searching as Gadir Gusenov. Look at how active Black's pieces are. Really, this whole game has been a you know all about the piece activity that Black developed, and he finally plays G three. Good stuff. And apparently, yeah, now there was I like a much better move. move. Bishop G two, I like now. Also, Bishop C four exists. Sorry, suddenly, does it not? But the the problem is that oh, it it does, and he plays it. But wait a second, Knight F three. Wait, check. it loses. Why does it lose? King G two. Knight F three. King G two. Knight E Oh, wait a second. Knight H4? Queen E4? Queen E4? Oh, Knight G5. Knight G5. It's, a simple, it's as simple as the retreating knight move. It's oh over. It That's is it. all over. Look at how many... I mean, everything is collapsing. Every single piece is threatened. Oh, wow. It's over. I mean, we're That's not talking it. about a draw here. White can resign. Pram Okumin is going to win this game. He ain't going to just squeeze out some draw. You're right. You look wow. at him. He's he, he just knows that that's but it. Okay, because Gusainov played 
I mean, the whole game was poor. Rook takes yeah, C4. Yeah, the opening like, wasn't great, and and you know, he, he never really had any chances here. Rook takes c4 ends the game. Rook takes c4, Rook queen takes c4, c4 queen, queen h3. h3. Oh, queen h3, even, yes. Well, and Guseno's yes. down a minute on the clock, so it's all over. Queen h3, knight f3, mate. Queen h3, oh, knight f3. Miss mate too. He missed mate in two. Yeah, he's so focused on taking the rook or whatever. Yeah, and Guseno resigns anyway. It's all over, and Hrant Malkumian. Hrant Malkumian is our second play in qualifier. $5,000 at a minimum was on the line in that game. What a clutch performance, Lawrence. There was never really in doubt from the very beginning, and the Gusainov's strategy backfires. That draw offer in the first game, that didn't bode well for him. Kaisa yeah, did not I, I smile that. upon that. I hated that. I think it's first against the spirit. You have the white pieces. You've got plenty of play. I don't know what he was trying to achieve. I think it was a really, really poor strategic decision. And with that, of course, it means that uh, Rant takes second place $600 and he qualifies and it's $5,000. So it's it was actually a like a, a fifty two hundred dollar difference that game as as a, it's it's a, it's a lot of money for a ten minute game, um, you know. So well done to Grant. He is through, and there are another nine qualifiers. Yes, How about plenty that? more. So Gadir Gusenov, he's going to have his chances. Gregorio Par and other players. Your 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 boy uh, Jaspam. He will have another chance, and he will not have to wait long for it because the next qualifier starts in only 53 minutes, and there will be more chances for players to qualify into the knockout to join the 64 big boys who will be contesting the knockout stage and trying to make their way to Toronto, Canada to ultimately claim $200,000 in the Chess.com Global Championship crown. But with that... I think it is time for us to wrap up. The stream will go offline for a bit, and then we'll return with a new cast and a new crew for the second qualifier of the day. That start time will be 10 a.m. and 52 minutes from now. But for now, Lawrence, a pleasure. This was our first Been time fun. commentating together, and I truly yep. hope that it will not be our last. Absolutely. Cheers, Daniel. So thank you, Lawrence. Thank you to everybody for watching and people starting off your week with some chess. Thank you to Bick, our producer, for another flawless show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next qualifier starts in just about 50 minutes. Make sure to tune in to this very same channel. But for now, I am Lawrence Trent, GM Daniel Meriditsky, saying goodbye from the 2022 Chess.com Global Championship. Hopefully see you in just about 50 minutes for the second qualifier. Goodbye. <laughs>